Scions. Glad you could catch our signal. Welcome to the Signal Flags podcast, a show about drafting and the eternal card game. I'm John Wells, joined by Ian Scalding Hot Soup Suzuki, eternal streamer and draft master. We're here to talk about all things draft, whether it be reading signals, tricking the algorithm, or building your fundamentals. Ian, how are you doing? I'm good, John, though technically I am only a draft diamond right now. Mm, yeah. I those... haven't been playing a whole lot until the new set <laughs> yeah the monthly resets have been rough to some of us yeah yeah so are you ready to get started i am because uh, boy are we kicking off with with quite the mouthful yeah so we're gonna go ahead and get started going through the uh the card the commons and uncommons of the new set the the dusk road yep we're gonna start with the fire cards and move through in alphabetical order Mm-hmm. So if you're following along, um, we yes, we'll be starting with ancient defenses. Yep, um, ancient defenses. I, I I do want to remind people that we're going to be grading these, or at least giving them sort of ratings, um, and we're going to be using a system very similar to what Limited Resources uses. Um, they use a letter grade. Uh, letter grade system um, so for those of you who are not from the US uh, that's A is good and F is bad um, and uh, so so have you have you listened to the limited resources system or no yes I, I'm quite familiar with how LR evaluates cards excellent so just for the uninitiated uh, generally how limited resources uh, does their ratings is A's are bombs they are incredibly powerful cards you almost always take them early um, you have to have a compelling reason to pass them essentially they warp the game um bees are cards that reward you for play uh, for being in their color um they're strong signals usually uh but they may not be so game warping that you're willing to jump out of the color you're in to uh to grab them um but either way they're, they're still quite good c's are your bread and butter draft cards uh they're the cards that you um how to say it <laughs> they're the pawns of limited. yeah 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 they're, they're the pawns exactly the pawns of eternal uh they are the cards that make up the vast majority of your deck um the uh this you know you're never sad to play a c but you're also never super excited to play the c's um d's are cards that are either very niche or are over costed as in they cost more than they should for the effect that they give you um so yeah we'll talk more about those when we get there um, and Fs are just unplayable. Don't play Fs. Um, sometimes, and we will mention this when it, when uh, we notice it, sometimes th- uh, there will be a deck uh, in which an F can function, but 99% of the time you're better off if you don't play them. So I would say leave the Fs to the professionals. Yeah. Or the foolhardy, like us. Exactly. Um, there also LR does things like sideboard or build around build arounds can be relevant where there's cards where, um, they really, really incentivize you for building around them. And so they would get something like a build around grade and we don't have sideboards in eternal draft. So we not going to give anything a sideboard grade. Yep. Yep. But that's true. We might, we might do a build around grade at some point. Yeah. Um, so let's start off with ancient defenses. Like we mentioned, it is four fire fire for an uncommon relic. When you play a Sentinel, it gets plus two strength, and it has Summon deal three damage to an enemy. All right. So that first line of text, even if it didn't exist, uh, like let's suppose all it said was Relic, Summon, deal three damage to an enemy. Would you play that? I mean, I would imagine that even as a just a regular spell, four power for three damage is probably fine. It would probably be a C. I wouldn't be excited Mm -hmm. to play it, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't be up. I wouldn't be like no, not playing it. Yeah, I, I'm actually pretty happy about that. Um, I think that maybe this is just I, I've done four drafts in this format so far. Um, I feel like three damage is a good place to be in this format. If you can't deal three, um, you're missing some of the more important threats like the, the common four three for four uh, four three for three that we're going to be looking at later on, and a few others. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be anything to write home about. Um, Now, if you have Sentinels, it certainly rewards you a little. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a few Sentinels that we'll get to in Fire as well as in Time that Mm -hmm. definitely get better with uh, increased strength. Uh, Plus, with Bond being one of the major mechanics, I would imagine that making our Sentinels a little bit stronger might be relevant for making some of the uh, the bigger Bond payoffs uh, come down a little faster. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about the whole thing with Bond. Um, I will note that I think Sentinels are less common than most of the other tribes. 
So you're probably less likely to get much use out of the first part of this card, but it's still very serviceable. I mean, there are um, cards that care about having relics that are like the Explorers, which is one of the tribes that support Sentinels. Mm -hmm. um, like there's an uncommon one that we'll get to a little bit later um, that I think would that works very, very well with this. Yeah. Um, so I imagine that even with that in mind, um, Ancient Defenses will have some play. Yep. I mean, I can agree I'm, with that. I'm pretty uh, uninitiated or not good when it comes to <laughs> Eternal Draft, uh, but I would probably give Ancient Defenses somewhere around like a C plus B minus. Yeah, I think I like it at C plus or B minus. It definitely goes in the first five or six cards in a pack. In an excess, in an exceedingly bad pack, I could see first picking this. Um, I don't think I'm first picking this very frequently though, especially because it has uh, two fire influence requirements. So you do have to be somewhat committed to fire in order to play this. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, moving on. We Next have our first up, common. We, yeah. Yeah. First common is Backpackers Machete, uh, three fire, uh, plus two plus two weapon, and it has summon Scout, uh, which is just them rewording. Look at the top card of your deck, and mm -hmm. you may put it on the bottom. I really like this guy. The first thing that I saw was um, it's an ornate katana that mm -hmm. costs one more. That gives you two, two toughness, and instead of drawing the card, you see whether you want it or not. That's and Yeah, that's an interesting comparison. I think that, that it's good enough on its own, probably. Yeah. So I think that I would still take Ornate Katana over this, because yes. drawing a card is definitely better than having two more toughness and the scout. Um, but it, I don't know, like... Two, two toughness. Look, the problem with Ornate Katana is you would often have a board where you could put it on something, but it wouldn't let that thing attack through a good blocker um, because it would still just trade. So you were effectively trading one for one in, in card quality. Uh, but with this machete, you can put it on something relatively small and put on a lot more pressure than you could with Ornate Katana. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I think that this is one of the better weapons at common. Uh, I would sure. be hard-pressed to find a better one that costs that much for three yeah 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 certainly not in fire no um, not in fire yeah so i don't know i think that uh i'm gonna be taking this fairly high uh i don't think it's game breaking because at the end of the day this isn't that much better than crown watch longsword yeah i right? don't think it is either i mean i loved longsword a lot but that was because of my 170 with like huru <laughs> hero of the people nice nice but here are the people's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. So I think Backpacker's Machete is very, very solid. Where would you grade it? Um, I think I would be giving this probably a C plus or a B minus. Very similar to Ancient Defenses. Uh, probably closer to C plus. Um, I, there are going to be times where I cut it from my deck, so I don't think it's in the B range. Um, but uh, it doesn't require you to commit super hard to fire. Um, Crown Watch Longsword is a great card, and even though we're comparing it roughly equal to crown watch longsword maybe a little worse maybe a little better depending on the deck um you know that card wasn't better than a c plus or b minus i don't think yeah i would put backpackers machete at c mm. um i imagine that there's a if there's gonna be better cards out of a pack that i'll want like a, a removal spell even a bad removal spell i think i would take over backpackers machete mm -hmm. but you never know yep fair enough yep. okay next we have, we have yeah yeah go for it we have barbarian camp your units have plus one attack yeah barbarian camp is very interesting um it reminds me of uh warhorn from yes. um magic, magic origins yeah yeah um i've where... i've had the pleasure to play with this sorry go ahead keep, keep yeah, talking okay. <laughs> i'm interrupting a lot yeah it reminds me of warhorn and warhorn was very good if you are was very very good in the very very rare blue black one drop stack uh, which I drafted once and it was fantastic. I loved it. Um, costing four is a, I think is a big cost. It is a relic for cards that care about relics, mm -hmm. but having one, having one extra strength can be very, very ch game changing. Yes. Um, so this card is deceptively good. Um, it, if you think about it, like consider probably the closest card to barbarian camp in eternal right now is Zen and Obelisk. Yeah. And that comparison should send a shiver down your spine. Um, <laughs> because this is the better half of a Xenon Obelisk at common. 
Yeah, um, we didn't mention that it was a common. Yeah, this is a common. Barbarian camp is four power, one fire influence, common relic. Your units have plus one attack or strength or whatever. <laughs> I'll be using strength. I'll be, okay, whatever. all right. I'll try to use strength too. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, it's definitely not as good as Zenon Obelisk, obviously. Um, you don't get the bonus when you get to eight, uh, and it doesn't get the toughness boost, but man, this can really put on the hurt for your opponent. And it's not the worst on blocks either, because as long as you have a board, um, you're going to be making more favorable blocks when you have the Barbarian Camp. Yeah, I mean, trading up with your, yeah. you know, dinky fire units, like whether you're mm -hmm. making a bunch of Grenadine or whether you have some of the Gunslingers, which don't tend to be very beefy, yeah. you know, you get to trade up and trading up yes. is very important. Yep. Um, so, you know, it, it definitely, it's, it fits into that awkward non-unit slot, um, which tend to be occupied by removal spells and pump spells and relics. And there's a limited number of slots that you can allot to this type of effect. However, this is a card I'm going to be specifically looking for, um, personally. Okay. So, so um, where do you grade it? I think I'm grading this at. It's definitely cut better than either of the cards we just seen. So I would give it a B minus, just a straight B minus. So if Ancient Defenses is a C plus and Backpacker's Machete is like a C, this is a B minus or a B. Yeah, I, I like B minus B for Barbarian Camp. Yeah. It also gets crazy in multiples, so if uh, you get to lucky to have two or three. It, it um so the, you could say it gets better in multiples but my counterpoint to that would be uh would you rather have another barbarian camp or another unit to take advantage of your barbarian camp and i oh, think definitely another, usually i definitely another i would have unit. the uh, yeah so you know give supposing that you ha already have 20 units and you're just looking to fill out seven non-unit slots then yeah i would like to have multiple barbarian camps but you still can't prioritize this that highly which is why i'm not willing to give it higher than like a b minus because i will be taking removal spells over barbarian camp most of the time Absolutely. Um, but this is a card you will be rewarded for playing yes i totally agree cool all right next is barkeep's friend uh, it's a six fire fire relic weapon. It's a four two relic weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, it has entomb create and draw a plus one plus one weapon. Eh. I don't like this card. I don't either. It 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 compares unfavorably to magma javelin, and that's not where I want to be. <laughs> yeah. um, because magma javelin was playable, right? It was a uh, you know four four power four one relic weapon, and. It usually would trade for a four or five drop and deal you some damage in the process. And that was that. And that was fine. Right? Yeah. Like, I was okay with playing that card. This is two more power. And the bonus is... And, and another influence, by the way. And the bonus is one point of defense. And you get a weapon? Eh. I first saw this um, in a when I was cracking packs and I recorded that it should be going uh, should be going up on YouTube here shortly, and I saw this and I was like this card's bad, it's just yeah it's just not good. I, I mean, mean it's it, a relic it, if you care about relics. Yep. it is a relic weapon, and my biggest thing is I started to evaluate relic weapons not as you know relic weapons but as removal spells. And would I be happy with six power fire fire deal four damage? to another unit and i think the answer is no i agree i i think that this is something that you'll play if you're desperate for removal and you don't have anything at six but this is a pretty bottom tier card and i'm i think it's a d i think it's a solid d too yeah, yeah just a d yeah cool next, next we have disassembler uh and what does disassembler do disassembler oh man i have had the pleasure of playing this card already uh it is a two power uh one fire influence two two uh, that says, when one of your Grenadine, including Disassembler, dies, deal one damage to the enemy player. So this is a tribal Grenadine card. Yeah, and it is a Grenadine, and we'll be mentioning the... We should be mentioning the subtypes, because yes. uh, Duskroad being a tribal-focused set, those do become very important. Mm -hmm. And Disassembler, I think, is just, just all-around good. Yeah, I mean, well, my, my, my thoughts on Disassembler is that its floor is relatively high. It's a two power two two that is par for the course it's a two power two two that usually deals one extra damage to your opponent um in eternal it's a pretty aggressive uh, game in most cases you need to have a certain number of two drops like six to be probably happy six or more most of the time uh and this is one of those six if you happen to end up 
in the Grenadin deck, this is going to be one of your better cards. Um, now, I think it's worth remind, uh, reminding people because this is uh, you know a new set, and especially newer players to this type of card game um, might not understand what tribal means. Basically, uh, Disassembler only really cares about Grenadine, right? Um, so if you have other Grenadine, um, it gets a bonus from you having them and them trading off in combat or just dying. Um, but as a pick in Giraffe, you have to be careful how highly you value that, right? Yeah. I mean, I imagine that Disassembler's, again, Disassembler's floor is it's two power 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and fine. That's already playable in and of itself. Yep. Uh, we've played worse two power two X's or two twos mm -hmm. in Eternal, like Bold Explorer or Bold, yeah, Bold Explorer. That's the that two, two at a time, right? two three. Yeah. That card was always fine. I think that's and better than this. <laughs> yes. I mean, being a two three is definitely better than being a two two. Uh, but in Fire, you're going to be aggressive. You are likely to get a bunch of Grenadine, and Disassembler definitely helps you pay off in that situation but yeah i would be totally happy paying it playing a two power two two that deals one to the enemy player right now having said that we've made the case for it being playable how high do you think you're going to pick this i mean i i undervalue two twos i, I always oscillate between undervaluing two twos and overvaluing two twos mm. i can never find the perfect medium where i need to be so i think that starting off i'm going to put this at a, at a b Ooh, but I don't high. know if it's <laughs> actually a B. I, I think that's way too high because, like, the text on this card, the when one of your grenadine dies thing, yeah, that's relevant. But I think in the vast majority of the cases, that maybe represents three or four damage. Yeah. And how high, how high were we on ticking grenadine? Because yeah. this yeah. isn't that much better than ticking grenadine. At least not the effect, right? The effect sure. is pretty similar. Uh, to taking grenadine and the fact that you know the bonus of this card is just a it's a two two for two two for two yeah. so like i that um, b is the fa is a b minus for being a two two for two and then no, it's not, maybe no. a, a little a third of an extra no. of a letter two grade for twos are c's man <laughs> this is why i'm bad this no is it's why okay. you need to teach me like no no no, no it's fine because like i i think i don't know it in this format if it was just a two two for two with no other text right yeah. Um, I don't even know if there are any in this set. There probably aren't. Um, but if it was just a 2-2-for-2 two, two two with no other text, I'd say it's a C. You'll take it mid-pack, and it'll do the job, right? Yeah. Um, so if we say that that makes it a C, the fact that it's a Grenadin makes it a C to C+, plus because that's a relevant creature line or unit line. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that it has this you know, burning bonus maybe pushes it to C+, plus, just a straight yeah, that's C+. Fair. I don't think it gets better than that. Um, because I'm looking to pick up two drops, but I want my two drops to have more utility in the late game, I think. And this sure. definitely has some utility, but dealing maybe three damage in a game is not that relevant. So Okay, that's fair. You've, you've talked me down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's okay. Like I, You might be right, right? Like, I don't know how aggressive this format is. Yeah. It's possible that this turns into some hyper-aggro format, and Disassembler ends up like an A-tier pick. Um, yeah. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but yeah. it is certainly aggressive. So C plus may be underselling it a little. Yeah. I also just checked uh, all the comments are on commons. There are no vanilla two twos for two. Gotcha. Okay. So. Yep. Maybe relevant. Who knows? Yeah. Yep. Here's a question. Sorry, we talked about the stupid car way too long, but here's a question: Would you pick a stranger over this? Uh, like a fixing stranger. Yeah. Hell yeah! Right. Uh, probably yeah. I'll probably take a stranger over this. Right, of course you would. Yeah. Um, and and so that puts a ceiling on how good this is. True. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I I think strange like the fixing strangers are maybe B minuses or C pluses. This has to yeah. be a C plus. That's fair. Yeah, I like C plus. You fucked me down. Yep. All right. Next. Well, we have first shot rioter three and a fire for a three two gunslinger which has gunslinger ally so when you play first shot rider if you have an ally or if you have another gunslinger or if first shot riders in play and you play another gunslinger put a play a plus one plus one weapon on first shot rider so sometimes it's a three power four three yep i think that's pretty good yes this card is i think the bread and butter of the fire curve um yes. and fire has a lot of nice aggressive commons um I, I i like this i've had three decks that played first shot rider the first two of them both got seven wins 
Um, and both those decks had multiple of these, and it overperformed. Yeah. One thing that's a little deceptive, or like a little hard to notice, is that it doesn't say get plus one plus one. It says play a plus one plus one weapon, which in some cases is worse, but usually is better, especially if you have something like Oni Quartermaster. Yes. Which I abused like insanely against uh, Northern Polarity, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that poor guy I, I think i drew four cards off of first shot riders because i was buying them back with dark returns um and and stuff like that so um if you have any synergy with weapons this card gets better if you have gunslingers this card gets better um especially like bond gunslingers this thing you know it's three uh strength for three power yeah it does work yeah. Um, uh, also to note, gun the gunslinger uh, factions are fire, shadow, and justice. Yes. So you're less excited about your first shot rider and your Praxis or Skycrag deck as you would be yeah, your yeah. Rakano or Stonescar. That is very true. Um, the decks that I've played this were uh, Stonescar, but yeah. Um, so, so I guess then the question there is, um, are you still happy with a three power three two if mm -hmm. you're not if you have no other gunslingers outside of fire? Um, I'd be looking to cut it. Yeah. Uh but that but it's still playable, right? Like, yeah, like it's I would still not be C. happy about it. But I no, it, it a three power three two in this game I think is a a D plus if it had no other text. Yeah, yeah. if it had um, no other text D plus, sure. Right, right. It may, maybe maybe like a C minus because it's playable. Um it's certainly better than a three power two three, right? Like yeah. a three power two three in this game is like a D. Um yeah. With, so yeah, I think, no I, think, anyways. I think C, C- minus is probably fine for first, first Shot Rioter, assuming you have another Gunslinger. Uh, assuming you have another Gunslinger, I'd put this at C+. Plus. Yeah, that's It seems that's like fair. a better than average common. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But yeah, if you don't have a Gunslinger, this goes way down. But I mean, the other thing is we're mostly thinking about this in the first pack, right? Like, yes. And in the first pack, if you're taking First Shot Rioters because it's one of the better cards in the pack then you're going to skew your draft slightly more towards uh, fire and justice and shadow. And so you're probably going to end up picking up more gunslingers. You only really Absolutely. need like five others to make the effect meaningful, I think. Yeah. So it's not. All right. right. Let's move on to Granite Waystone, which is a full uh, yes. cycle. Yes. There's one in each faction. Uh, they all gain an influence of their faction. And then if you have four of that influence, which includes if you play this as your fourth, you get a thing. And the Granite Waystone is create and draw a 1-1 one, one Grenadin. These are all common, by the way. Yep. Boo. Yeah. Don't draft this. There are some people who said this was the best, and I'm like, no. no. this is awful. Um, the, here's why it's... Okay, so so here's why there's an argument for, for drafting these. The argument is, if you take cards like Granite Waystone, they, inc they add value to your deck, which is true, right? Like... You know, if as long as your deck has more than four ways to create, um, uh, or more than three ways to create fire influence, then this is just straight value um, in your deck. There's no downside really. Um, now the the problem is, what are you taking this over, right? Are you taking this over a C level card in another color? Because if you are, you're making a mistake. Yeah. Um, because this card adds so little value to your deck that it's almost irrelevant. Um, like, let's think about the cases where this has to be good. You have to... Okay, so first, you have to be playing this after turn four, right? Or, or three, if you have a stranger, right? But you have to be playing it later in the game. Um, so you can't play it early and get the bonus. Uh, you have to be playing it when you have four fire influence, so in a pretty fire-heavy deck, or you have to get insanely lucky. Well, this this can be your fourth, so you only need right. three. But still, point right. stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. This has to be your fourth fire uh, influence, which is like hard. Um, and then third, the one one grenadine has to matter. And how many games have you played where your opponent has like a billion flyers, and having a one one on the ground just matters for Jack, right? How many times have your opponent had a towering terrors on, and you're staring at your one one, and you go, "Well, yeah, I survived one more turn." Well, actually, that would be pre a pretty sick bonus from a power source, right? Like, yeah. That would actually be pretty cool. But, you know, there's so many cases that, that lead to this card not being any better than a Fire Sigil that it's effectively not worth going out of your way to pick. Um, now, if there's two cards in the pack and one of them is Poop Tier and the other one is this, then and you're in Fire, then take this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's how I feel about all the Waystones. I don't think any of them are worth going out of your way to pick, to be honest. 
Uh, I will de- I will disagree on like one of them. I think. Okay. Well, we'll but get to it. But this one, I agree, is definitely low. It's definitely D to F. Yeah. Um, if you care about Grenadine, it is you do get a Grenadine, but yeah, it's it, it's still D to F. Yeah, it's not very good. Um, yeah. No. So you know, like again, it's an opportun like you can pick it opportunistically. There's literally nothing else. Um, but unless that's the case, just don't take this. I have not nope. drafted one yet, and that's because other people are taking them higher than me, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, we have the Hellfire Oni. Uh, what does she do? Hellfire Oni is a four power, one fire influence, three three at uncommon gunslinger Oni, which are actually both relevant taglines. Um, her ultimate says, when you play a weapon on Hellfire Oni, play an additional copy of that weapon on her. So that ultimate, it only happens once, remember, mm. because yep. ultimates only happen that first time. Yep. It can be very, very game-changing, depending oh, on yeah. what weapon you're putting on her. Oh, yeah, like that uh, that fire rare that deals three damage to a target enemy. If you put Ooh. it on a gunslinger, hell yeah. I mean, my first thought was um, Ornate Katana. Oh, yeah, that's good, too. Because then you make her into a 7-3 that draws you two cards. Yep. To be fair, my favorite thing to put on her is going to be Golden Glaive. <laughs> You're a but, savage. You know, that's living in magical. That's living in eternal <laughs> Christmas land. Yeah. Right next, to, sitting in in the villa between I mean, Patrick Tate's house be, and Louise's house. I'd be happy house. with Morningstar. I don't know about you. <laughs> Morningstar is also fine, but I was thinking of stuff that like gives extra benefits, like summon right, effects right. or like the empower of Gilded Glaive. But yeah, no. Right. Right. I, okay. It's so, interesting. Yeah, I mean, so four power for a three three is subpar, right? I'm not I'm, excited. I'm not happy to play pay four power for a three three with no other text so you must have weapons to play this if you have five weapons i would be playing this every time yeah every time because there's so much value from this this is you know it gives you a lot because you know a lot of the time if you play a weapon and your opponent has like let's suppose you put a two two on a like a two two weapon what was that weapon that we played? Backpacker's, uh, backpacker's machete. machete. Yeah, yeah, if we put Backpacker's Machete on a 3-3, it still gets stonewalled by a cannon bearer, right? Like, there's still expensive things that can deal with it effectively. But if you put a Backpacker's Machete on this, you have a 7-7, and that's a lot harder to deal with. Um, so Hard to kill 7-7s. Seven definitely. So, I don't know. I think, that, I think that Hellfire Oni is fine. How highly do you think you're picking it? I think she's a C. However, if you have if you're in the gunslinger deck, I think she's like a C plus, maybe B minus. Okay. Um, hmm. If I'm taking this, or if it's in the first pack, I think I would rate it at a B minus. That's fair. Because if I'm taking this build- early, I get to build around it a little bit. I can say, all right, weapons are worth a little more because I have this threat that rewards me for playing weapons. Um, but if I'm seeing this in the fourth pack. Then I'm a no, little yeah, no. less excited unless I already have weapons. And you'll know, right? Like, this is why I like to think about picks in terms of the first pack, because in the the, the the picks in the first pack are both more important and more difficult than they are in the fourth pack. Oh, yeah. Um, the earlier the picks are, the harder they are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. I, I think I like this uh, at, like, a B-. minus. Yeah, but that's. A, I think that's fair. C+, plus I, I think, is where I would sit at. Right. I could definitely be overrating this. Um, I, th- I think it's fair to call her a build around B minus or like a build around B yeah, because sure. if you pick her in the first pack, you have the opportunity to go out of your way and get, get your weapons or get your other gunslingers depending. Yep. Cool. All right. Let's move right. on to, oh, I'm boy. sad. This guy's an F I'm really sad. Uh, he's so cute. Look at him. He, he doesn't so have cute. legs, but he still it, looks it, like he's happy with life. It's the helpful door bot zero and a fire. Oh, three Grenadine. Yeah. Womp womp. Okay, so I saw someone in the Eternal subreddit saying, hey, this is good for as an early defensive blocker. And the problem with that is how many turns does this block for before it becomes outclassed? Um, two? One? Yeah, like two turns. So if you, it'll block most two drops, though not all two drops. Um, and importantly, it does not have any power, so it can't block two drops that have uh, Warcry, like Crownwatch Paladin, right? Oh. Like, it, it doesn't really effectively block Crownwatch Paladin because the point of the Paladin is not to deal damage, it's to Warcry at the top of your deck. Um, so there's, like, those sorts of problems. It doesn't really effectively deal with all twos. And then once you get up to three power and then four power plays, 
this stops being effective and it's only uses as a grenadine. Uh, I don't think there is a deck that benefits from having an O3 grenadine. Well, I mean, there's the rare that buffs your grenadine strength, but even then, like now you have a one three. Congratulations! You're, you're, still, play, you're still, yeah, you, 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 <laughs> you made a minotaur grunt without warcry. Good job. Yes. Um, um, yeah. Again, it, I'm really sad that this guy's an F. Also, the other problem is that you put this in your deck. Yep. There are. You could play. You could play a sigil over this. Yeah. More importantly, you took something. You took this over something. <laughs> Presumably, that's the, that's the bigger problem, right? Like, you know. Every 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 pick involves opportunity cost. Even if you're taking a bomb, pack one, pick one, right? Yeah. You're still passing up on other cards you could have taken. Um, you have to ask yourself how many games is or how many like how many games better than replacement is this card? Uh, that's actually something that baseball nuts like to think about. Yep. Um, which is uh, like for a given player. I, I remember Otani. Uh, Shohei Otani was in the news um, because he's a pitcher that can bat. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, people are saying, hmm, well, what what is his, you know, how many how many games beyond the average player would he get the team that he ends up signing with? Um, and you can think of cards that way, too. Right. Like helpful doorbot is negative in that sense. Um, you are going to win less games because you put this in your deck. Yes. Um, whereas a card like, I don't know, uh, disassembler is probably pretty close to even which is why we gave him a c to c plus yeah um so yeah anywho so, so, sorry Don't sorry play this. sorry <laughs> poor helpful doorbot yep next we have heroic bravo which is our first bond unit so the eight and a fire cost actually can be a little less depending on whether how strong your other gunslingers are because heroic bravo is a gunslinger he's a yep. four four overwhelm and you learned this Specifically, when you bond yes. Heroic Bravo, he deals two damage to an enemy. Mm -hmm. So, this again, all the bond units really assume that you have your other gunslingers. Yep. And Heroic Bravo can probably come down as early as turn four, if you have like a first shot rider with another with a with a two with a two power cost other um, gunslinger, and then you're playing you're essentially playing a four power four four overwhelm that deals two damage, which is pretty good. Mm hmm. Um, again, it's a common. I don't think that I would take better removal spells over it yeah, or uh, better units, but yep. I think that Heroic Bravo is probably very good, especially when you can get the bond benefits off of it. Yeah. So the way I look at Heroic Bravo is it's a five power play that requires you uh, to not attack with your three drop. Because at least in my experience, what happened most often is I was playing Heroic Bravo on turn three or turn four off of First Shot Rider. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, one thing you might notice when you play this set is there are less commons in this set than there were in, I think, the other two. Um, so, and, and there's comparatively, or comparably more uh, rares and mythics, or rares and legendaries. So because of that, um, you're going to be seeing a lot more duplicate commons than you would expect from a set like this. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the games are going to play out somewhat similarly in that you're going to see these curves happen over and over again. You're going to see like first shot rider into heroic Bravo on turn three and five or turn three and four. That's just going to happen a lot. And so, you know, that is a pretty strong curve. If you can curve a three, two into a four, four that kills something. Wow. That's nice. Um, what else was I going to say about heroic Bravo? Uh, well, he's a four four overwhelm. Yeah, four four overwhelm is also not nothing. It's pretty yeah. solid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just don't uh, when you just don't play this card if you have less than like five or six gunslingers. Just no, you need gunslingers. Right. You right. Need you them. cannot throw this into your random grenadine deck or your random you know whatever else deck yeti deck. Like it that doesn't work. Like you don't need Ian and I to tell you that an eight power four four overwhelm is not playable on yeah. its own. Mm-hmm. You don't need us to tell you that. Yep, and just remember, if you reanimate this, it doesn't get the bonus. Yep, we le you learned that the hard way. Right, right. Well, Sad I mean, I still day. won the game, but... <laughs> you did still win the game. Yeah. 4-4 four, four overwhelms, hard to deal with. Yep. Um, but, oh, wait, we didn't uh, rate it. Oh, yeah, rating. Uh, I, think I mean, I think like, it's like a C plus. I think it's a C. C to C yeah. plus, sure. Um, That's fair. The thing with Heroic Bravo is it's an expensive card. Even yeah. with the bond, you're going to be paying 
Like, at least for, almost certainly four or five power for it. Yeah. And so since it's pretty expensive, you can only have so many of these in your deck, and its value goes down, because it's competing with other expensively costed cards, like Cannon Bearer and uh, other things. And I would take Cannon Bearer over this every time. Luckily, we don't have to make that choice. But yeah, right, I think right. we don't. You, hit, but... you hit the nail on the head. Well, but you might have to make that choice in deck building. Oh, in deck building, yes, but not right. in like looking at a pack and going. Hmm. Sure, sure, but since 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 you know a lot of the decision making applies to deck building as well, because if you take a card like Heroic Bravo early on, you're risking you know maybe wasting that pick because you have to play a more powerful card over it. Uh, because you have a limited number of five and six and seven power slots for this kind, okay, this kind of effect. Okay, that's fair. That's all I'm saying. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, it's a good card, but don't overrate it. All right, let's move on to uh, our first combat trick, which I'm kind of surprised it took us this long to hit, which yeah. is Hoof Slash. Yep, yep. So what um, does Hoof Slash do? So Hoof Slash gives a unit plus four, plus two this turn, and it's a fast spell for three power and a fire influence. So I guess the question is, how much, how relevant is plus four plus two? Very. Okay. Um, especially in fire. If this was in justice, I'd be like, meh. But fire decks frequently have problems dealing with big things, and this can make your like four four. Which you know, is that the biggest thing we've seen so far? Is a four four? Yes. Right. It is. Like if this makes your four four into an eight six and trade or better that's worth playing for okay um i also think of like it on burst damage or on yeah, yeah. evasive threats or, or like, damage, things like yeah. flying or overwhelm or double damage yeah yeah i think the slash is pretty solid i mean i think it's uh, at, at at replacement level for uh pump spell yes i i've i've played this in a deck but i never drew it so i never got to cast it yeah. Um, so I can't really evaluate, like, I can't, I don't have any personal experience with this one yet, but, um, I think it's probably a C or maybe a C plus in that range. I think it's a C like C plus and, or B minus combat tricks really need to do something else for me. Yeah. Like if this was just rampage with that gave plus one plus one and it cost additional power, I think that would be a B maybe mm -hmm. B minus, but I think that hoof slash is probably like C C plus. And I think that's fair. Sure. Yep. All right. Uh, let's move on to uh, uh -huh. Helpful Doorbot's friend, the Iceberg Frontrunner. Oh, God. One in a fire for a 1-2 Yeti, which is a relevant tribe, with charge. <laughs> Don't play this. Yeah, Don't. well, uh, maybe. Unless you're really Yeti. You, you have to have, like, seven or eight cards that care about Yetis for this to be good. But I could see it. I could see it. Un unlike Helpful Doorbot, like, this actually has strength. Yes. Um, which matters like it, it trades with some two drops admittedly not many but it can um it can combo block with a two drop to trade for a three drop so it has some combat utility since it has power or yeah. since it has strength um but yeah you try you probably shouldn't uh you probably shouldn't play this unless you have yeti synergies which we haven't seen many of well not in fire at least i, I think yeah. they're all in primal and there is Are a multi-faction card maybe there was one in fire maybe it, they're like, rare there's a multi-faction one oh, okay yeah maybe i'm thinking that either yeah. way probably don't play this uh, probably don't. i would like say d minus it's d or d minus yeah yeah next we have oh this card is interesting I, I read it and i was like hmm, i wonder i wonder what people like ian would think <laughs> it's improvised rubbler yeah S seven fire 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 so you're not splashing this yep. this this relic weapon at uncommon. It's a five five relic weapon. Yeah. And when you play it, you play two one one Grenadine. Uh, I mean, I this is hard to evaluate because it's super expensive, but it is a very powerful effect. Like, yes. did you like Gun Down? I didn't like Gun Down at first, but then I and then I but then I was like, no, Gun Down's good. I like Gun Down. This is a, a lot better than Gun Down if it resolves. Right. Yeah. If if it's, it's way better if it bit. resolves. <laughs> um, but what's the problem? Yeah, it costs seven. Yeah, it costs seven and three fire. So you're not splashing this. Uh, oh. In fact, splashing just got a lot harder in general because there's far less fixing strangers than there used to be. So you're yeah, not far yeah, less but, far less banners. Far yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. So you're not splashing this. And then like, man, seven is a lot for a fire deck. But I could see playing this. I, I maybe just as a one of, 
um, to top out my curve. In yeah, a I don't not, do multiples. Yeah, not, not, not multiples, but I would play one of these to top out my curve in like a mid-range fire deck. Yeah. Um, not the way that I read it is though. that this is actually one of the relic weapons that isn't, that isn't terrible on an empty board. Yeah. Because not only do you get a 5-5 five, five relic weapon, but you also get two 1-1s. One, yep. Um, yep. It doesn't stop evasive creatures from like killing your relic weapon and on that, the crackback. Yeah, but evasive creatures die to the weapon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think that um, Improvised Rebeler is fine. Like, if it cost 5, it would be a B, I think. Oh, God. If it cost 5, this would be ridiculously broken. But if, since it costs 7... It's yeah. probably like just like a C minus. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like this is powerful enough. I think I like it at C to C plus. But again, it's in that awkward position where you don't want to take these too highly because you're gonna find other things like this that that work sim- in similar ways. Yeah. All right. Next up is a card that I read and I was very excited about. It's our first. Uh, is it our first real removal spell that's not like a relic? That's not a relic or relic weapon. I think it is. Mm, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, into the furnace, Ian. What does into the furnace do? Uh, it deals two damage to a unit. That all right? I'm in. <laughs> Are you done? Put it in. I mean, it's I mean, okay. Like it, like, it, it it kills the two twos. It, it kills does. X twos, which is and what the, I'm. <laughs> there are a decent number of X twos that matter. Um, yeah. It. I would say this is definitely better than what's what's that card in Shadow? It's a minus two, minus one. Oh, affliction. Yeah, this is way better than affliction, but affliction's bad. Yeah. Um, so this is like fine. Yeah. Um, now, but if you have a grenadine in your void, it deals double damage. That and your makes me like this be a in lot your more. Void. Right, right, right. It's not hard to get the grenadine in your void, and in fact, like you could get the grenadine in your void in the void to trigger this. Right, if you attack with a one-one grenadine into a five-five, this will kill the five-five, and that's a good trade. Yeah, um, like, like yeah, two to, two to, two power to deal two damage. I'm already okay on. Yeah, but two damage, two power to deal four damage. Yes, that's very good. Now, now you have me. Th- now you have me talking. Yep. Also, it's a common. We didn't mention that. It is a time. common. I yeah. Do note that it doesn't go to face, so you can't like attack your opponent with it. Um, but I think on balance this is pretty strong. Um, yeah, I think they've done a pretty good job. In, uh, in this card specifically to make it fairly comparable to picking a creature like this removal feels like it's a good pick but it doesn't feel like it's the must pick in every pack no um, like it definitely is i would t- i would probably take a unit over this in certain situations but also it just deals two damage to a unit and that that could be the difference between you yeah you know killing their six five or right picking off their storm crasher yes yep so oh, i think i would give probably this like c plus yeah, C plus seems about right. Maybe B minus. You do need you do need Grenadin though. Hmm. No. Nah. If you don't have Grenadin, it's like a C minus. And if you yeah. do, it's probably like a B. Like it, yeah. this is a really high range for a card. Yeah. Um, but I'd say it's comparable to something like Alchemical Blast, for instance, or Hipshot. Yeah. Shot. No. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Moving Next. on, we have Ooh, our Caleb's. First... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, our first intervention. Th- this cycle is very interesting. Uh, my first exposure to this was when I was opening packs and I was like, this is cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for the Magic yeah. players, they're charms. Yes. Um, so this card is one power and a fire influence for a spell. Note, not a fast spell. That, 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 that throws people off a lot because most people, when they look at this, they think, oh my god, this is so much better than like everything but no it's not a fast spell um you can either play a 1-1 grenadine or you can give one of your units plus two plus two an overwhelm or you can kill an enemy weapon so the way they designed this card is they gave it three possible modes none of which are worth a card but together give you enough flexibility that it's probably useful in most scenarios I think in limited, uh, Caleb's intervention might be the one that has the most utility, mm-hmm. um, because a lot of the other ones have, or every every single intervention cares about a tribe in some way. Mm-hmm. Caleb's interventions makes a one one, right. whereas the other ones are like draw one from your void or return one yes. to your hand or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so I think that for Caleb's intervention, it has its three modes are always relevant, even if you're not a Grenadine deck. Hmm. Um, well, yeah. It's I I, it's a... I I think that this is a pretty playable card. 
mainly because well actually which which mode do you think i like the most uh, i'm going to assume it's the uh the middle mode no it's the third mode i think that the weapon part is actually the most important even okay. if you're not using it in that many games how many games have you said said oh my god my opponent put a 3-3 weapon on their flyer oh yeah true right like there's so many cases where you just can't interact with what your opponent is doing because you don't have a way to deal with the weapon. Um, yeah. This can kill relic weapons too, which is huge. Yeah. So, you know, this that third mode is surprisingly helpful, I think, and the second mode, I I think, is the second best mode. Um, sometimes you're just going to have a six six, and you're going to make it an eight eight with overwhelm, and your opponent's just going to say, "Whoops, I lose." I guess. I will say I think the second mode is going to be played more than the third mode. Yes, I would agree with that. But I think that the third, the upside of the third mode is huge. Yes. And then the first mode is like, maybe if you need a chump block, right? Like, yeah, if you're really desperate. Right. But if you're if you're using the first mode on Caleb's intervention, you're probably losing the game anyways. Yeah. So the first mode doesn't really do much for me. But the other two I like, especially the third. So where do you grade it? Ugh, this one's a hard one to grade. I've consistently taken other cards over this, um, but I don't think it's crazy to play it. I think that this is probably just a straight C. I agree. I think this one is just C. It's playable. It's All the way bread down. and butter, um, and it'll give you a way to deal with weapons. And if you don't have something that can deal with weapons, maybe this goes a little higher in your pick. pick order. Yeah. Next, we have Oni Cave Diver. Yep. She is a 2 fire, 2 2 explorer Oni, both of which are relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, she gets plus 2 strength while you have a relic. And she has an ultimate, pay 2 to scout. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm in. This card's great. I mean, again, we talk about the floor. Yes. You know, we look at Disassembler and we look at Oni Cave Diver. Very similar. Both have tribal payoffs. Yep. If you have a relic, she becomes a 4 2, which is pretty good. Um, in one of your games from streaming the night before you, we had her and played, then you played ancient defenses <laughs> and mm -hmm. just like bash. Yep. So and how, how would you rate this compared to disassembler? I think this is strictly better than disassembler. Yeah. I think mainly, I agree with that. <laughs> mainly because the ultimate <laughs> yeah. is pay two. It's not pay three. It's not pay four. It's pay two. So even if you have, let's say you redraw your hand in limited, which you're probably going to do I actually haven't done the math, but I assume that people redraw a higher percentage of the time than they keep their starting seven uh, or their, their opening hand. I actually don't know about that. And by the way, this is a bit of a segue. I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole. But uh, someone, I forget if they were crunching a bunch of numbers from a lot of people or just their own numbers. But uh, I think it might have been Clarity GG or Iliac or someone um, who was checking to see how often they win when they mulligan versus when they don't. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I forget who did it, but they found that they were winning about 45% of the time when they mulligan and higher when they don't. Interesting. Right. But point being, if you have a, if you, you know, redraw into a two power hand or you have a two power hand and only cave diver, you can keep it mm -hmm. because you get the chance to scout. Yep. Yep. And I think that that all in all makes only cave diver a very, very good card. Yep. Um, yeah. You always. Anything that helps smooth out your draws is better. Is good to have, rather. Yeah. So. Uh, B, B plus. Uh, B plus is a little high. I, I like this. Um, I think I rate it B minus or B. Okay. That's uh, B fair. B plus is implying that it's almost a bomb. Oh, fair. Yeah, right? no, it's not a bomb. I think this this is like definitely better than your average common. Definitely better than your above average common, maybe. Um, but would I take it over something like a torch? Hell no. Right or fair. So I, I think this is probably in the B minus to maybe B range, but probably close to B minus. That's fair. It's a two two that sometimes scries one. Yeah. Or scouts one. So yeah. Uh, yeah. next we have Oni Gunright. Ian, what does the Gunright do? Uh, so Oni Gunright is a six power two fire influence, five three, with Warcry when you have an ally. So it says Gunslinger ally Warcry, which basically says if you have another gunslinger then it gets warcry at any point so you could play gunslinger after you play this and then it'll have warcry when it dies you draw a weapon from your void it is also a gunslinger oni in it yes it's a gunslinger oni uh which yeah i mean it's also oni gunright that's the name that's his name so <laughs> it would be very weird if it was like explorer yeah no it's it's a yeti don't yeah. don't ask don't ask questions she's she's still so i guess the that. question <laughs> The question is, is 
is a six fire fire five three exciting i'm guessing no, no. it is not no though it does have the important stat which is the five right like yes if, if, it can if, kill your opponent very quickly right like if you're if you're paying six power for something you want to have something that can trade with other six power plays and for the most part this can with maybe the help of a two drop so you're not you know this is this is definitely over costed in stats um I think the Warcry part of this is less important than the Entomb part of this. Uh, I agree, but I think that usually, hopefully, you have another Gunslinger in play by the time you get to your six drop. Oh, sure. So it might. Ha it probably has Warcry a larger percentage of the time than I think, like, first start. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I think that this usually has Warcry, but yes. what I'm saying is that Warcry on a six drop doesn't matter very much, because if you're attacking with this, you're probably you're winning. winning the game before the Warcry matters at all. Sure. Um, and if you can't attack with this, then the Warcry doesn't matter. <laughs> so uh, fair. Right. So so I don't think that the first line of text matters very much. And to be frank, it seems like a really odd, like, I don't know why they designed it that way. It just feels a little weird. Well, I think it's a 5-3 uh, for the Entomb, which is draw the weapon from your Void, which yes. can be yeah, yeah, a yeah. backpacker's machete. It could be yeah. your barkeep's friend that you had to trade off sure. because you can really get rub bad. weapons. That's a good point. <laughs> but... It all depends on what your weapons are, I think. Yes. Um, yep. So, like I, in, a, in a zero weapon deck, this is probably a C minus. Uh, in a zero weapon deck, I would put it at D plus. I, like, yeah. I don't think that the Warcry matters in that deck, and I don't think that the uh, five three is where I want to be. At but if you power. have a weapon, if, if you have like, let's say you have two great weapons and three okay weapons or two okay weapons, then yeah, play this. Yeah. So C um, C plus if you in that case. I would say B minus. Like there are gonna be if you have great weapons, like you have your Morning Stars and you have your ornate katanas and you've got your uh what else is really good? Your relic weapons that are really awesome and bomb worthy, right? Like if you have those things, then yeah, this goes up. This will be one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah. Um, like getting back your orc rune hammer? Oh. Oh god, yes, please. That sounds amazing. <laughs> um please, yes. Um so anyways, there are there are decks in which this is great, and there's, but most of them, this card is average to below average. So, definitely, you can take this in a pack that's otherwise pretty weak because you can build around it a little bit. Um, you can take it if you have some fire cards already, and you think you can go into a weapon heavy build. But if you don't have weapons, I would not be looking to play this. All right, let's move on to Powder Keg Rider. Uh, five fire for a three four overwhelm grenadin at common. Oh, yep. by the way, only guns only gun right wasn't uncommon. Oh yes. Uh, powder keg rider has an ultimate that whenever one of your other grenadin die, which we have mentioned will happen. <laughs> uh, powder keg rider gets plus four strength. Yes. Um, I had the uh wonderful occasion to use scrap hound to sacrifice a uh one one grenadine. And pump the Scrap Hound and the Power Keg Rider at once. It was great. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, but anyways, this is a common reward for playing Grenadine, uh, Grenadine Tribal. Um, if this is just a 3-4 Overwhelm for 5, you're not happy. You should not play this in your random in your Gunslinger Tribal deck or in your Yeti no. Tribal deck. Only play this if you've got like 7 or more Grenadine. And then it'll be a good curve topper because that deck doesn't really want to go beyond five power anyways. Right. Um, and if you think about this as, oh, it's like a 7-4 Overwhelm, then yeah, you'll want this. And, you know, it synergizes well with pump spells too. Like, what was that pump spell that we saw earlier? Hoof yeah, Slash? Yeah, Hoof Slash, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is really good with Hoof Slash. Very nice st uh, stat line for that one because your opponent probably blocks us with a 5-5 five five and this just wrecks that. Um, so if we're if we're not playing any Grenadine, this is a D. But if we have Grenadine, this is probably a B. Uh, if no, I would not call it a B. It, it's it's C plus. It's still replaceable, right? Like in the Grenadine deck, if you're playing even just like a five four for five, that might be better than this on average, right? What are you saying? You need like maybe ten Grenadine before it before it becomes like a ten all, or like all a B. All I'm saying is that if your Grenadine deck needs top end, this is there for you. And okay. it's that common, and you're the only person that's going to want it, so you're going to get them. Okay. Um, okay. But so you don't have to prioritize this at all, um, I, I think. Okay. But the problem here's the other problem, though. Like, if you don't prioritize this kind of card, when are you ever going to get the Grenadine deck? 
that's True. the funny thing about tribal strategies. Um, yeah. So and it I, is a common payoff, which I think is very, very relevant because yes. obviously the rares are going to be the the splashy ones. Yeah. But if you if you have you know a bunch of Grenadine in your deck and you need a payoff for it, Powder Keg Rider's there. Yep. Unexciting, but it's yes, there. yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm thinking with this card, um, I'm probably not going to almost ever pick this before the fourth, the fifth, or sixth card in a pack. Um, okay. And I'll be happy to get it eighth, and I'll be sad to if I have to pick it before like the sixth pick, basically. All right. So okay. I, I don't know. I think this is like on average maybe a C in terms of pick order. But if you're if you don't have grenadine at the point where you're thinking about this card, it's not worth taking. Okay. All right. Let's move on to Ruin Crawler Yeti. We have another oh, Yeti boy. here at Uncommon. Yep. Uh, Ian, what does the Rune Crawler Yeti want? It is a three power, one fire, two two at uncommon. It's a Yeti, obviously. Uh, and you summon it, and it kills an enemy attachment. And when Rune Crawler Yeti hits the enemy player, it gets one strength. Not bad. So Not bad at all, right? So like the the least important part of the text is the second part, right? Like we do not care about the when it hits the enemy player, it gets plus one strength. Doesn't really no. matter. What matters is the summon effect. Um, now the question is, how important is it? Is it is it like, mm, gosh? Because I remember like what was Furnace Mage, right? Yes. Furnace Mage, you would you would take pretty high because it was a four three for four, which was a good stat line already. Um, unlike this Yeti. I had, right. to, I had to rhyme that, sorry. Um, but yeah, so the, the Furnace Rage is a 4-3, you know, which is a good stat line. Um, and then you didn't really care too much about the ability, but when it happened, it was really good. With this one, I think it relies a lot more on that ability. Yeah. Um, uh, of, of relevance, it destroys curses as well, and there yes. are cards that care about curses. That's um, true. And there's seven curses at common and uncommon that we will eventually get to. So that may be relevant. I mean, obviously, I think your your most common use case is going to be destroying weapons or yeah. destroying relic weapons or relics. But. Yes. Um, I think I'm okay with playing one of these, but I think I'm using it mostly. I'm just holding it in my hand until my opponent plays a weapon. And if I ever have to play this out without killing something, I'm very unhappy. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know. I think this is probably like C level card. Yeah, C is fine. Because the other thing is, like, when when the second ability matters, it's because you're already winning the game. Mm -hmm. If you're attacking with this and you're hitting your opponent, that means that, you know, turning this from a 2-2 into a 3-2 doesn't really change your opponent's position. Like, it, it, or, or your position, really. I mean, it kills them slightly faster. Yes. But, but it's win more. Doesn't exactly. really do much. Does not matter. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the card you mentioned earlier. Ah, yes, Scrap, Scrap Hound. Hound. Scrap Hound is cool. So Scrap Hound is one power, one fire influence for a 1-1. One, one. Grenadine. With ultimate, pay four and sacrifice another unit to give Scrap Hound plus two, plus two. And if it was a Grenadine, Scrap Hound gets plus four, plus four instead. Another common tribal payoff. Yep. Um, so this one is, I think, maybe one of the most reliant on having other Grenadine to sacrifice. Yes. Um, but, uh, man, this one really rewards you because plus four plus four is pretty big and some of the grenadine actually want to be sacrificed. Yep. There's a lot of entombed grenadine in yep. this set as well as in other sets like, yes. like empty throne. Yep. So like taking grenadine, you want to sacrifice that one. Um, there's the one that comes in and makes your opponent discard and that one doesn't mind being sacrificed cause it already got some value. Um, right. like there, there's a lot of grenadine that you can sacrifice and then turning your one drop into a five, five keeps it relevant in the late, late game. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I like this. I think that it's probably better than, uh, what was the last one? Powder keg rider. Yeah. I think this is better than powder keg rider. I would take it higher than powder keg rider. Um, but you know, this is pretty committing. You are not playing this outside of a grenadine deck. So, so like build around B, build around B minus. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I think build around B minus sounds about right. It's definitely solid in the right deck. Yeah, but and, if you don't have any other grenadine, you're not playing scrap house. No, definitely not. Like 
Yeah, and and the fact that it's pay four for the ultimate, not pay five, makes a big difference because what I found happens sometimes is you play Scrap Hound on one, you play some evasive threat on two, on turn three. Actually, I found Sparkbot went way up. Um, do you, is, were you there it, for that? It draft? is two Grenadine. I was not. No. Okay, so in that draft, I had three Sparkbots. I think <laughs> I played all of them, and that that deck was just busted because I had all the Grenadine I wanted. <laughs> and curbing scrap hound into random two drop you know, like you know even even the vulture scavenging vulture into Sparkbot, into sacrifice the token from Sparkbot, and swing with everything uh it was it was a really really nice deck um yeah and granted like that it. curve doesn't sound that effective but it was it was nice trust okay. trust me trust me it's good all right um, let's move on to skycrag huntsman uh, three fire for a one four explorer gunslinger. Yep. Which both relevant. You may pay for an exhaust skycrack huntsman to deal one damage to an enemy if you have a relic. Yeah. Um This is like the worst Stormcaller ever, and Stormcaller wasn't apparently that good. Yeah, Stormcaller wasn't great. Um the fact that you have to pay four is brutal. Um that's a lot. I mean I would be fine with exhaust and deal one damage to enemy if you have a relic, but even then, yeah, that's not exciting. Yep. Now, Praxis is where the this is actually a Praxis card. I think it says yes. Skycrag Huntsman. That's a lie. Skycrag doesn't want this. Praxis no. does because Praxis has the cares about explorers cards, or at least it has more of them. Mm-hmm. And Praxis has Gunslingers because it has fire. Um, mm-hmm. And Praxis has the relics. Praxis is the uh, faction that cares the most about them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is secretly a Praxis card, but I'm still not liking this that much. Nah, uh, I think it's like a D. Yeah. D, D sounds, D sounds about right to me. Also uncommon. Yes. This is one of the worst uncommons though. Yes. I guess one, four for three isn't the worst. So eh, it's good know. defensively. If you, yeah. if you're in a defensive deck, it's okay. Eh. It's fine. I, I think D is about right. Yeah. If you need, if you want this, you'll know, <laughs> You'll know. Uh, yeah, you'll be in the Praxis deck, and you'll pick it up pack four really late, and you'll be happy. Yeah. Um, next, Spark Hatcher. Ooh, Spark Hatcher is fun. Mm-hmm. Two fire for a two one Grenadin. When it dies with Entomb, you play a one one Grenadin. Yep, this is the bread and butter of the Grenadin deck. Yep. Um, um, yeah. Probably just a C as far as grading. Yeah. It's very simple, very straightforward. Yeah. But if you want Grenadin, it's there, and if you don't want Grenadin, it's probably fine it's still fine right like two one for two trades with most two drops and leaves behind a dude so it's okay it's fine yeah i, I think c's about right yeah next is uh staff of the arc magister five fire fire for a zero zero weapon yes sounds zero, promising zero weapon sounds promising. it's plus one plus one for each spell in your void uh, this is just an f uh, this is a right? constructed plant right uh, probably, I think it is a constructed plant. Uh, I did joke about when I first read it, it going into my moment of creation deck. Um, but yeah, I think this Staff is Staff of the Unplayable. Not good. Nope, F, don't play this. Uncommon. Worse than Skycrack Huntsman, which is surprising. Mm-hmm. All right, next. Star- Stone Scar Sawed Off. Yep. Is, what, is, what does the Stone Scar Sawed Off do? It is a four power, one fire influence weapon. Uh, that uh, has four strength and one defense. Yep. And you summon it, and you exhaust an enemy unit. So four power, four one weapon. Unexciting, right? Or is that pretty uh, good? It depends. I think like if I'm putting this on an evasive creature, I'm not that sad. Um, I mean, or a creature most with of these weapons, overwhelm. Most of these right? weapons get great on evasive units. True. So I think. I like. I don't want to put this on my woman on Grenadin, obviously. Right, right. But how? But then you also get to exhaust an enemy unit. Mm-hmm. I Is, mean, there, yeah. does that make does that make it take like another jump in power level? Uh, I mean, the exhaust an enemy unit is pretty good. Um, I think that if you treat this as a curve topper for an aggressive fire deck, you could do a lot worse than this card. Yeah. Um, like th- this reads to me more as like almost a five or a six drop finisher than anything else. It's similar in some weird ways to like rally type effects. Yes, I um, agree. But God, if you have Hellfire Oni and this, Ooh. game over, game, game over, buddy. 
over. Attacking with your, what, 11-5? 11, 11-5 11, <laughs> 11, <five laughs> that two, exhausts two enemy units? Yeah, yeah, no. They're just dead. Right. So there are definitely synergies with this card, but I I have taken... Uh, what did I take over? The, I took Barbarian Camp over this. Yeah, you did. Um, I remember that. Yeah. I would take Ancient Defenses over this, probably. Yeah. Um, so That's fair. This is fine. It's under. It's not exciting, but it's definitely there if you have the right synergies. If you have your Oni Quartermasters and you have your Hellfire Onis, this goes up. So So C? Yeah, I think C. It's playable. Okay. Next, Ooh, tempered next. Sentinel. Tempered Sentinel, five strength, three defense for a charge bond Sentinel. At uncommon, that costs six fire, fire. Yeah, what does bond do? That's the cost reduction. Yeah, I know. I'm asking for, for the viewers. Oh, for the viewers. Uh, so bond, we mentioned it on Heroic Bravo, mm-hmm. uh, but if you have a unit that shares a unit type with the tempered Sentinel or the Heroic Bravo, in this case a Sentinel, you can exhaust it to reduce the cost of the Temper Sentinel by that unit's strength. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you have a one co- a one strength Sentinel, Tempered Sentinel costs five. If you have a five strength Sentinel, Tempered temper Sentinel costs one. Um, so Tempered Sentinel is interesting because it has charge and you're exhausting a unit to then play a new unit which can actually attack, which I think makes it a very interesting card to to evaluate, which is what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's definitely a little odd because if you're exhausting the three, three strength unit to play this on for three, for instance, how often does this attack through something that your three strength unit couldn't? The answer is not not that often. The answer is sometimes Uh, this, the funny thing is I think sentinels specifically are a bit more important than they appear because a lot of cards have are playable, but then have a big sentinel bonus. Like the next card we'll talk about, Temple Raider is a requires has sentinel ally, right? Which, uh, which we'll is get to a little hard to find, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that that sentinels might be other than maybe unseen, they might be the hardest fa- uh, the hardest um, tribe to find. Um, which is because... why they're which is you know, why they're paired with explorers right. in this whole tribal duality that exists yep so yeah tempered sentinel is an interesting one i don't think it's a super high pick but maybe if the explorers deck ends up like the explore explore sentinel deck ends up really good it could go up a little bit because you know this will be one of the key pieces to that deck yeah and Um, unlike heroic bravo you don't you don't need to bond this to get any bonuses like you can just play this as a six power five three charge you're not happy yeah but you can yes that's true yeah, the main thing is how easy are Sentinels to find, and the answer is not very. So Bond is less relevant on Like, this is the first Sentinel almost. we found. Is it? Yeah, yes. you're probably right. I thought there's one more, isn't there? There is one more. Wandering it's the last, Fort, it's right? the last fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire common, uncommon. Yeah. There's one more one more in Wandering Forge, I think. Yes. Yep. So I guess it all depends on how often you're getting Sentinels. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know the answer to that question yet. We'll find out. Yep. All right. Uh, for uh, rating? Way, grade, like, yeah. C? I think C sounds right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could end up being better. I mean, if it if we think of it as a 3-power 5-3, hey, 5-3 uh, with charge, that's pretty strong, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, there are... It's I just uh, scrolled ahead. There are a lot of Sentinels in time, so yeah. maybe when we get to time, we'll figure out how easy it is going to be to play Tempered Sentinel yep. for cheap. All right. So. Next, we have Temple Raider. Uh, it's a three power, one fire influence, two, two with charge and it's an explorer and it has mm-hmm. sentinel ally plus two plus two. So I guess, um, are we happy with three power two, two? No, no. Um, are how, I don't think there's any sentinels that cost two, which would turn this into a four, four charge on turn three. I'm sure there's some, but yeah, I can't think of any. Um, so I'm, I'm imagining that this is more of a kind of a three power deal for damage to the face if, when you have a sentinel late in the game, as opposed to and kind they don't of, have a blocker for it, I guess. Yeah, which yeah, I the way I'm seeing this card is you're gonna get it almost last pick, right? Because it's not yeah. very good. 
And if you happen to be in Praxis, it's there for you. Yeah. But you don't need to prioritize this because there's way better cards. Like it, it, Basically, you only want to be drafting Temple Raider if it falls into your lap. And if it falls into your lap and you happen to have a bunch of Sentinels, then play it. Because, you know, 4-4 four, four, charge, uh, charge Explorer for 3 is pretty good. Yeah. I'll be happy with that. Very happy with that. Um, but, yeah, it, it seems like you just have to do a little too much work to get there. So this is like a build, like, it's probably a build D minus. C. Yeah, build, build around, around C, C yeah. or like a D normally. Yeah. Yeah. All so. right. Moving on. Tumblebang. Tumblebang. It's a Grenadin. Yeah. It's at uncommon. Mm -hmm. Three fire fire for a three one. And when it entombs, you get three power plus three power this turn. Yeah. So, Ian, how excited are you for a three power three one? Not very. Uh, I would play it maybe. But only if I really was lacking in, in three drops. Um, and then the big, my biggest thing with the Entomb is that how often are you not going to be able to attack with this? Or how often are you going to attack and your opponent not block it when you need that three power? Uh, good question. Like, I'm evaluating this as a three power three one. Yeah, this no is text. primarily a three power three one Grenadine. I think the Grenadine text is relevant for sure. I agree. Um. The you get plus three power this turn matters, but your opponent can play around it. Now, the funny thing is playing around the plus three power thing means not blocking it. Which can kill them. Which, right, which deals them damage. So the problem is your opponent gets to choose. And as we know from countless, uh, what do they call them, Punisher effects of magic? Yeah, Punisher cards. Right, like countless Punisher effects of magic, they almost always end up bad. Like, whenever your opponent gets to make a choice on what bad thing happens, in this case, do they take three damage or do you get three power, right? Whenever mm. they get that choice, assuming they're playing optimally, they are going to give you the worst of those two options. Mm. So, like, early on, maybe this gets through once or twice, and, you know, you, uh, like, like they, they choose not to trade with their two-drop, and you deal three or six damage. But once they have a 4-4... Four, four, um then the three power probably doesn't matter as much anyways so i don't know like later in the game like if, if you could play this and then actually you know what i just thought of something if you have ways to sacrifice and get value this could go up i mean with scrap hound it's it's uh pay one yeah sack tumble bang that's true which then lets you cast your rally got it. <laughs> true um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it does get better with sacrifice, right? It does get better with sacrifice, but then you're sacrificing a real card. So yeah. I don't know. Um, you don't basically, you don't want to give your opponent choices and attacking with this is giving them a choice. Yeah. So, so C plus, I think it's a, I think it's a straight C. Okay. Also like and double fire means that you can't splash this either. Like, or, nope. or, or it has to be in your main color. It does. Yeah. You, you can't be, you know, kind of fire. You got to be right. all in. Next, we have the Unpredictable Outlaw. So, Ian, what does the Outlaw want? It is a two-power, one-fire influence, two-two gunslinger, which says Relevant. when you play a weapon on Unpredictable Outlaw, exhaust an enemy unit. Hmm. Well, this is something to put that sod off on, right? Oh, yeah. That's exhaust two units. Value with right a, there. With a 6-3. Um, yeah. So this is another one of those bread and butter fire curve out cards. And very frequently I've seen this. You play Unpredictable Outlaw and then you play, what's the next one? Um, sorry, I forgot. The, first, the shot or right. first Shot Rider. First Shot Rider, yeah. Yeah, then you play First Shot Rider and then you play uh, ice, uh, not Stone ice Scar Shot Off. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Stone Scar. Uh, sawed Off. No, 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 not the Sawed Off. That's not the common part of the curve. No, no, no. This, it's this oh, one to the, the Bond creature. the Machete? Right? No, the Bond oh, creature. Huh. Oh, Heroic Bravo. Yeah, Heroic Bravo. So you, you play this, and then the other thing, and then the Bravo, and then you just, like, follow it up with other stuff. Um, and it's a pretty strong curve out. Yeah. Um, this definitely rewards you for having weapons, but I don't think it's, like, a, an above-average two-drop, per se. I think it's just an average two-drop, which puts it at, like, a C or C+. Plus. I think that's entirely fair for Unpredictable Outlaw. Yeah. The gunslinger Although, is probably more important than the play a weapon part. Yeah, because you're not playing that many weapons. Like you said, like you're talking like playing like five weapons yep. in your 45-card deck. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's fair. 
moving on, the last fire common, we have Wandering Forge, which we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Four and a fire for a 4-2 common sentinel. Yep. Uh, and it gets plus one, plus one in Overwhelm while you have a relic. Yep. That seems relevant if you have a relic. Yes. 5-3 Overwhelm means that you've cheated one mana on a Dusthoof Brawler, right? Or was that the name of the card? Dusthoof uh, Brawler? Yes, I believe it was. Right, right. So from set one, there's the 5-3 yeah, five, 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 three, yeah. Overwhelm. So you basically get that if you have a relic. That mm-hmm. seems like a lot of work, but... I mean, 4-2 for 4 isn't that bad. The problem... Okay, so the problem with a 4-2 for 4 is it trades with almost every 2-drop. That's really not what you want to be doing. No. Um, I mean, fire gets to be aggressive, and that's why it has this 4-power 4-2, which can sometimes be a 5-3 overwhelm. mm -hmm. Um, It does let you play the Tempered Sentinel for 2-power, or 1-power, maybe. But then you're tapping this to do it. Which can be relevant. But then again, you're looking at the situation where... Where could my 4-2 attack that my 5-3 suddenly now can? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think it's probably just C-minus. I think C-minus is accurate. And the nice thing about this is if the Sentinel deck exists, which I still haven't seen it, honestly. Um, if it exists, then you're going to pick this up late. And yep. you'll have access to it. So. Yep. Cool. All right. That is it for fire. That is all the fire's com- commons and uncommons. How do you feel about it? I mean, it's very aggressive, and I think mm-hmm. we saw that a lot of the value is in Gunslingers as opposed yeah. to the other tribes. Yeah, I think, well, I think Gunslingers are focused in fire, and we're, and so Gunslingers and Grenadine are focused in fire, and then, like, the other two Explorers slash Sentinels are definitely more in time, and yeah. Yeti are more in Primal. Primal. So. And what were there any others? I'm trying to think. Uh, like, well, Gunslingers go into Justice and Shadow, so. Right, right. No, I was saying like. Uh, oh, tribes? No, I think we yeah, have. Think we, we hit sentinels and then explorers. We hit Grenadine. Oni is and technically we... a tribe because there's that. Shogun. But there's only the, there's only the one card that yeah. legendary that yeah, cares yeah. about it. So yeah. So, yeah. anyways, cool. All right, let's move on to time. Uh, because again, for people who may be just joining us, ta- it, the the faction order is fire, time, justice, uh, primal, shadow. Yep. For all the marbles. And moving on, we have our first sentinel. Well, third sentinel. The ageless one. Yep. Four time time for a 3-5 at common. Yep. Very vanilla. Nothing really going on other than that it's a sentinel. But wow, that's a lot of power, a lot of strength and a lot of defense. Uh, I mean, the, the first comparison that I made to it was striped Arachidon, which is four time time for a 4-4, which yes. is a dinosaur. Yeah. Um, I imagine that this isn't a 4-4 for stuff like Bond. Um, and So that's why it's a 3-5 as opposed to a 4-4 or any other combination of those stats. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's I, probably I, like a C minus. I, I, oh, I think it's better than that. Like what attacks that? through, what attacks through a 3-5? Like, tell me. Uh, that we've seen nothing. Yeah, yeah basically <laughs> nothing. So this is a solid blocker and three power is enough that it is a meaningful clock. Yeah. Um, so I actually quite like this. And then Sentinels are relatively hard to find in fire. So if you're in Praxis, picking them up in time is pretty important. Okay, that's fair. Um, I think this is close to Arachidon. Close, yeah. I don't, 4-4 does kill faster than a 3-5. Right, but it also doesn't block quite as much. True. So I, I think that on balance, it's very close to Arachidon. And I would I would pick them clo- about the same, to be honest. Okay, so are you have it like a what, C? I'm thinking C plus. Okay. Just on stats. That's fine. Four power for a three five is great. I'm a big right. fan. Uh, next we have the Amarin Shoveler. Um, what oh, does she do? Uh, so she is one power for a zero one with one time influence, and she pay you can pay two and exhaust her to look at the top card of your deck. If it's a Sentinel or Relic, you draw it. Otherwise, you discard it. I think this is a constructed plant. This feels like it's constructed, or yeah, four constructed. There might be a deck where I'll play this, but I really don't want to because, like, paying two to filter your draws seems like a little odd. And it's not even filtering the draws. No, it's, it's not. Draw, draw a sentinel or relic, or put it in your bin. Yeah, I think this card's an F. I don't think it's an F. 
Cuz what's the problem with putting it in your graveyard or in your void? I mean, okay, there are there are cards that care about it like we saw a few of the Grenadin, a few cards that cared about Grenadin being in the void. Right. Um, there are and then You're not playing like, this in a Grenadin deck though. No, you're not. I agree. Um I guess there's some Xenon shenanigans that you could pull with Shadow uh-huh. like if you get like a Grasp a Grasp of Darkness, you can really filter your draws that way, but right. I don't I, know. I guess what I'm trying to say is like when are you activating this and why? Are you activating this on turn two? No. Well, if you are, it's because you're missing a two drop that turn. And then this is just value, right? There's sure. no, there's not really any downside to playing, to using this ability. Um, in that, like, yeah, you might have to bin something, but that's not that bad because you probably didn't want to draw it anyways, right? You would have rather had a Sentinel or a Relic. So no matter what, this gets you closer to Sentinels or Relics if you care about them. Okay. So how many sentinels or relics and or relics do you want in the deck where you have Emmer and Shoveler? Right. I, I think that I would want like a third of my deck to be sentinels or relics. And then yeah. how likely are we going to get a deck that is one third, which would be in this case, 45 divided by three, uh, 15, 15. Yeah. <laughs> how often do you have 15? I don't know why I was blanking on that. How often yeah, do you Mr. have 15 former math teacher? Or sentinels? <laughs> um, so, I don't think it's going to happen often, but there are enough relics that you can pick up that I don't think it's that crazy. I don't know. I, I think this is probably playable if you have 10. Okay. And I think it's probably actively good if you have 15. So would you say this is closer to like build around I think B? it's a build around C. <laughs> because around, you're, still okay. not, like you're still paying two and you can only do it once a turn. So you're not like, you know, machine gun or deck or anything. Right. You're, yeah. Um, but there is card advantage in this card in the right deck. Okay, that's fair. Um, and it's an explorer, which maybe matters, but eh. yeah. I think that you're better off not picking this than picking this. True. So I think that, you know, ignoring the build around, I kind of want to call this a D or D minus. Yeah. Um, maybe an F. But if you happen to have the cards for this, this goes up. Yeah, better in pack four than pack one. Yep, definitely. All right. Uh, let's just skip Amber Waystone. It's bad. You gain yes. two life. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe it relevant. If it's like the one of the last cards in the pack and play it, maybe. But you know, don't like, go like out of your way. It's not going to be a big thing right now because you're only getting one pack of omens. So unless you get like Becky or you know, mm-hmm. Mask of Torment or whatever, and even Mask of Torment wasn't that good. Like, yeah. don't. Uh huh. And then there's Ancient Bubble. Uh, am I wrong for thinking this card's terrible? Mm. Nope, you're not wrong. Okay, that's what I thought. By the well, way, actually, one time on. common. Here, here, okay, let me let me pose you a question. Sure. How much life do you have to gain before a card is worth a card? Um, per cost. Let's say let's say let's say you had to pay two, right? Just like which say, is yeah yeah. How how much life would you have to gain? Just like no other effect would you have to gain for uh for it to be worth. A card in your uh, a card in your deck. Ten. I think yeah, maybe like more. maybe fifteen, ten or fifteen, somewhere in that yeah. range, right? And that at that point, you swing enough races that it can be a blowout, right? Um, and it can stabilize you in awkward situations, right? Yeah. So there is a theoretical value, like life gain does have value, even if it's a small value, it does have value. Um, By the way, we didn't uh, actually mention what the card did. Oh, sorry. What? Yeah. So for the for the audio viewers, um, I'll probably edit all that out. Actually, um, but yeah, it's a one time. Uh, it's one time relic at common. Once per turn, you can pay one to gain one. Right. Right. Gain one life. Right. Uh. So, so like, yeah, there is a certain there is a certain uh, limit, I guess you could say, um, to how bad a life gain card can be if it has a ceiling of, you know, X amount of life. Eh, yeah. Maybe that, that's a bad way to say it. Um, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is, like, if this gains 15 life in a game, hold my God, that's a lot That's a lot of value. Now, the problem is that would mean you're paying 15 mana for it as well, which yeah. is insane. Um, which, to be fair, is over several turns for yeah, this card. Yeah, it's over but... 15 turns in that case. Um, which, if you're, if you're playing 15 turns of Eternal, right, right. hopefully you've won by then or you're right. getting close to it. Yes, um, so I don't know. I think that most of the value in this card comes to the fact that it's a relic. Yes. And it, let's suppose in an average game you gain six or seven life off of Ancient Bobble. That might be generous. 
Um, but we can suppose that six or seven is probably average for this card, maybe. Mm -hmm. So then how close to a card, and, and if we assume that that makes it worth a third of a card, right? How close to two thirds of a card can you make the fact that it's a relic, you know? We have seen a lot of cards that care about relics and fire, and there are definitely a few in time. Mm -hmm. I don't think this gets there. I don't either. I think there's better relics that you can pick up. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is probably an F, just a straight F. Yes. There might be a deck out there that cares so much about relics that you'll take this. And maybe this does some work, but I don't know. I, I think you're better off never playing this than playing this sometimes. Combos with Ammer and Shoveler. Does it, though? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. All right. Next, we have Baying Sarasaur. This card, I think, is pretty good. Three in a time for a 2-2 two -two common dinosaur relevant because it's one of the tribes mm -hmm. it has summon nightfall it's our first nightfall card um which it, when night falls uh each player starting with your opponent gets a turn during night which means that they draw an extra card at the beginning of their turn and they take one damage and then it'll come back to your turn and then the night will be over and whenever you draw a card bang sarasaur gets plus one plus one this turn yep so so without it's night it's a three power three three, which is mm -hmm. fine. Well, on your turn, it can't block as a three power three three. Right on your turn, it's a three power three three. Right, but at night, it's a four four without any other draw effects. Yep. Is so I guess the value. The question is how much do we value the nightfall, mm -hmm. and then how much value is the ability? Um. I think Nightfall in general is neutral. In general. Okay. Um, so one of the cute little things about Nightfall, by the way, is if your opponent uses a Nightfall spell or, or, or unit or whatever, if they if they cause Night to fall, and you have a Nightfall effect in your hand, if you can, you should use that Nightfall effect because you will get an extra card, but your opponent won't. I believe for, Nightfall extends. Does it extend? Night, it extends it by one turn for both players. Oh, if I recall. interesting. Because I heard some people saying on the Discord that it didn't work that way, but I haven't been in that situation personally, so I. I, be, sure. I remember from the from the rules one. Um, I've been pl I've been playing with Nightfall and ranked, and I oh, haven't, okay. it hasn't come up a lot. But I think it, it's it's I think it's ex supposed to extend it by one for both players. Oh, okay, never mind then. Forget what I just said. We'll edit that out. <laughs> Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I, I think Nightfall in general is pretty neutral. Um, yeah. I, I think that you can make a deck that takes more advantage over it than others, but if you're stuffing a bunch of cards that specifically care about Nightfall into your deck, you're probably putting bad cards into your deck on purpose. Okay. Um, and that generally speaking, you're better off just playing a deck that incidentally takes advantage of nightfall then needs it to be night in order for its cards to do stuff like okay. there's a primal card that it's like temporary frost um, yeah tempa frost uh because it it taps something down at night which mm -hmm. is really bad <laughs> um so anyways yeah um, so what about bang sarasaur but what about being Sarasaur? I would be pretty happy about this in general because you can make this better than a 3-3 three, three on your turn sometimes um, because there are more than one types of effects that draw you cards. So the first time this attacks, it's a 4-4, four, four, mm -hmm. right? Which is strong for a 3-drop. Um, every time after that, unless you're drawing extra cards, it's a 3-3, three, three, but that's still fine. The problem is later in the game, this gets outclassed, and if you ever have to block with this, you're not happy. No. But at that point, you've probably already got your value out of it, so that's okay. I'm um, I'm leaning at this as around like C plus, maybe C. Yeah, I think C plus is probably fair. If you care a lot about night, which can happen, mm -hmm. it probably bumps it up to B minus. But I think yep. C plus is a is a good baseline. Yep. And what we haven't mentioned is that this is a dinosaur. Yes, it, it has are, tribal payoffs. Right, and there are a bunch of tribal payoffs for dinosaurs, so that probably solidifies it for C plus for me. There's a this does enough different things that I'm okay with this. Yeah. So moving on to another relic, it is cryptic etchings. 
Um, Ian, what does cryptic etchings do? It is a two power, one time influence relic that says once per turn you may pay two to scout. So, Ugh. my initial read on this was it was very, very bad. Yeah. But it's better than Ancient Bobble. Is what, what, which one's Ancient Bobble? Sorry. The one that gained life? Oh, well, yes, that's true. So, I guess the question is how happy are you with cryptic etchings uh, if you need a relic? Not very. I mean, if there... Okay, so there's a card in Magic called Search for Azkanta, right? <laughs> yeah. Are you familiar with that card? I am very familiar okay, with it, Okay, yes. so for, for the viewers who might not be familiar with this, it's uh, basically... Uh, what is it? One one in a one in a. It's primal. one in a blue legendary right. enchantment. Right, right, right. Uh, you look at the top card of your deck. You may put it into your discard pile, into your graveyard. And then when you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you can flip it over into a land that does things. Right, right. So the funny thing about that card is even if you could never flip it, it would still be pretty good. Yeah. And actually, like, it, most much of the time, people don't flip it because you don't have to. Yeah. Because uh, if you have seven or more in your void or your graveyard, then, you know, you have the option of flipping it, essentially. Um, yeah. The thing, the, the, what, and that card was pretty good and limited, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is, one, it didn't impact the board. Right? Yeah. So you would play that on turn two, and your opponent would be doing something to the board, and suddenly you're behind. It doesn't matter that much how good your draws are if you're getting beat in the face, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could have been playing like a, two power two toughness two drop right um the other problem with this card is that you have to pay two to do it search for Ascanta I mean, is free <laughs> i mean it's a power sink if you need those but i right, found but after overvaluing cobalt ring that yeah. power sinks aren't as important in eternal no they're not and they're more common too yeah as mana sinks are in magic like mm -hmm. in magic if you can find a mana sink you're golden it helps but a lot yes but in Eternal, I found that these these power sinks are not as effective as you would think they would be. Yeah, because yes, because people are playing with overall less power in their decks anyways, um, and higher threat density. So you don't you don't run into flood problems as often in Eternal as you do in Magic. Right. That's my read on it. Um, but in any case, this card is bad unless you need relics. It is worse than an already mediocre to slightly good card by a long stretch. And that's not good. Right. That makes sense. So um, I would it's say It's probably that, like D minus. Well, sorry, couldn't hear you. I, I, I like it at D minus. Um, yeah, I, I think I think D is probably about right. Like if uh, like you said, if you need a relic, then this is there. And maybe maybe you fit in a few scouts here and there and it becomes worth a card. But um i'm not looking to play this i think that the relic deck is mostly a trap oh yeah i believe i believe so unless you can get like again the good ones yes all right next disjunction disjunction seems good it's two at a time for a fast spell draw an attachment from your void or kill an enemy attachment wait which junction uh this one <laughs> anyways not that one this one yes so this is a fast spell um let's see so the first mode is pretty useful sometimes, right? Like, your attachments are frequently some of the better cards in your deck. Mm -hmm. um, it also synergizes randomly with things that make attachments, like, uh, what is the, uh, the the red Acolyte? Uh, Granite Acolyte. Granite Acolyte, yeah. Like, Granite Acolyte makes an attachment, and people don't really think about it, but yeah, when you make it, you get an Iron Sword in your void when that creature or when that unit dies. So, mm -hmm. you know, this has more targets than you'd think. Um, the kill an enemy attachment has some value too. The problem I have with this one is that this isn't a, this isn't magic where you can sideboard between rounds. If you could sideboard between rounds, this card would be pretty sick. Yes. But as is, I don't think this usually makes the cut because yeah, this is this is situational enough that there's other cards I'd rather play over it most of the time that. Might not do a similar thing, but they do something every time, if that makes sense. I mean, the, I guess another way to look at this is we had the Yeti and Fire, the three power two two that destroyed an attachment when it came yeah. into play. Yeah. That's just better than this card because it's a two two that can attack and block. Right. Whereas Disjunction, you're relying on 
either them having a attachment, which they might, but they which is always, worth killing, or you're getting back an attachment from your void, right? Which may or may not happen, right? Right. Um, so I don't know. Destruction probably uh, it's probably like a D. Like you could play it. Yeah, but I would I would put it a D. I yeah. think it would be like a sideboard B if we had sideboards. Yes, and this will blow your opponents out too. It'll be great. Yes. So oh boy. <sighs> This card. I, yep. I'm, I, I'm interested to see what you think about it. First watch. Five at a time for first watch. It's an uncommon spell. It has nightfall, which means it becomes night, and you gain eight life. It's poop. Don't play it. Please don't. It Don't, please. I understand why people <laughs> will play it because it's eight life, and it's nightfall, so you'll have more life than your opponent, so you can get more draws out, out of it. Don't play it. Don't, don't play this. It's bad. Okay, sure. Maybe if you have... Um, What's the card that makes Restless, Restless Radiance in um, Omens? Oh. Um, Blood Call Invoker. <laughs> like, if you have him, sure. Yeah. Go nuts. <laughs> Don't play this, please, ever. Yeah. This is really, really, really not something worth playing. Um, straight life gain effects don't do enough. They don't impact the board. So if you were losing, you're still losing, even if you have a little more life. Um, if you're ahead then wouldn't you rather have something that takes your opponent's life down instead of make your opponent and then make your life higher? I don't know. Um, also, your opponent would dr- get to draw an extra card. Yes, Who wants that to happen? exactly. In, in that specific situation. Well, yeah, and you would also deal in one, but they would probably rather have the card anyways. Exactly. So, yeah, this is probably like a D- minus with the niche case that every once in a while you'll have a life gain deck, but I think that's so uncommon that, you know... Especially with only one pack of omens. Exactly. That It's just not worth thinking about. Nope. Ooh. All right, fishing dinok. Di- di- dinok. I, I feel like I should be Scottish when I pronounce that word. I you know yeah, that? I think yeah, you know that. Oh, man, I can't. It's I a can't. fishing dinok. Yes, oh. thank you. All right, there we go. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what does the fishing dinok do? It is a three, three, four, five with one time influence. That uh, when it's you have a dinosaur. a dinosaur ally, it gets plus three, plus three. So it's a six, six. And it, it itself is a dinosaur. Yes. Oh look, he's fishing. Oh, oh. He, that that fish is having a bad day. No. Um, so like a flounder. Yeah. Five yes. power three three, not good. Uh yes. If you have a dinosaur deck and you have like eight or more dinos, I would play this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like five power six sixes. You That's know, that's real. Yeah. We're we're on board. I mean, sure, yeah. it trades with towering terrazon, but towering terrazon trades for a lot more than a six six does. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I like this a lot. I would definitely play this in a dino deck. Um, it's very, it's very, I think it's very replaceable. I think it's a C, C plus. I think C or C minus because it's a five okay. drop and no, sure. no uh, mana cheapening mechanic or sure. cost reducing mechanic. Uh, it does, it does matter that it gets six power for the next card, which is a bond dinosaur. Oh yeah, this guy. But <laughs> uh, it, it could be relevant. And uh, this is the card that I kind of joked about in my set in my uh, card preview article which was for sand spitter which is a rare we'll get to later um if there's ever a big bond brontosaurus which foraging sauropod is definitely a big bond brontosaurus <laughs> yes this card is ginormous it's um, huge 10 power one time influence for a six six with bond at uncommon at uncommon and when it attacks you play a three three dinosaur with overwhelm so, uh, what's the earliest you could really feasibly play this? Um, so if you, all right, you can play Towering Terrazon on turn five, and then yeah. you can play this on four on turn six. Are there any five? Oh, yes, there is. Snapping Brush Stalker at four. And then you can play yes. this on turn five. So you can play this on turn five with an uncommon from another set. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> there, yeah. There's also Striped Arachidon, which we mentioned before, which well, is that's a only four. four. Which so lets you play you, this on turn six. So most of the time you're playing this on turn six or later. Right? Yeah, I think I think turn six is maybe like hey, so turn five is like the absolute best case, but I think turn six is the the actual best. Wait, case. no, we can do better than turn. Yeah, no, we can do better because we could we could have a, a three power dino on turn two, and then sure. pump it on turn three, and then play this on turn four. Uh, how do we pump it on turn four? Uh, you play blood letter on it on turn three. Okay, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Magical Christmas let's, land, you know. Let, let's move back to Eternal Christmas Land. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I think turn six is probably the most is the 
quote best case, even though turn f- turn five is the best case. Yes, I think turn seven is more likely, obviously for various reasons. Um, yeah, but making a three three whenever it attacks as and it being a six six is is relevant. Yes, this blocks almost everything uh, on the ground, um, mm-hmm. and then when it attacks, it leaves behind some value. So this is effectively nine nine worth of stats for a six power, more or less. Um, I think that this is probably a high pick. Um, you 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 would put it like around the B range. I think it's in the B range, but you definitely have to be playing dinos. Like if you're not playing dinos, don't don't play this. No, that, so as, like, as a ten power card, this is not where you want to be. I yeah, think yeah. if you can play this on six or you know, God forbid, five, then you're doing it. Yep. Then you've got it made. Yep. Cool. So yeah, I think B is fine. Yep. Ooh. All right. Frenzied Omnivore. When an enemy unit dies, Frenzied Omnivore gets plus one, plus one. Summon, you may discard a card to give it Killer. Which, by the way, it is a five time time, four three uncommon dino. Yes, this card is great. This card's insane. Yeah. It's Big really fan. good. Um, so I think the most common case is you discard a card, you kill a 2 2. This becomes a 5 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's already really good. Like a 5 4. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I think that this card, like, it's a it's a, it's a time removal spell because they don't get a lot of those in time. And I think that discarding a card is very likely going to be a sigil. Yes. Um, there are there may be other uses where you discard something that matters or cares about being discarded or maybe you have some other way of interacting with the void. Um, mm-hmm. But I think this, this card is very, very strong. Yep. I think it's probably a B+. Plus. Uh, I think B, but yeah, this is really strong. It's not an A. I think that's very clear. It's not an A. Yeah, it's not an A, but it's, I think, I think B or B ish is about right. Like you, you do have to discard a card. Like you're not getting card advantage off this usually. No. Right. It'd be difficult to get card advantage off this guy, but the fact that it gets, it keeps growing when your opponent's creatures die, uh, or Pronus units die. That that's nice. So I think that this is probably like B range, but I'd say middle to lower B range. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I would be I would take Frenzied Omnivore over Foraging Sauropod. I agree. Yes. Given the choice. Mm-hmm. All right. Next we have Gloaming Wisp. What is Gloaming the Gloaming Wisp? Is... is a one one for one, and one time influence for a flying, uh, unit that summons Nightfall. So how good is a one mana one one flyer? Uh, not very. But um, there... is Nightfall better? Does does Nightfall make it from like what's probably a D card to something that we'd want to play? No. Okay. I think, like I said, I think Nightfall is usually neutral. If you're in an aggressive deck, Nightfall gets way better. Mm-hmm. If you're in a slower deck, I think Nightfall gets worse. So I don't think Time is a particularly aggressive color. Like, it can be. But, you know, Time decks, to me, I think Time, I think, like, Dirtling. Mid-range. Um, mid-range. Mid-range or, or, long, or long game decks. And this doesn't really go in those. So maybe this belongs in some sort of weird Praxis deck or... Uh, some sort of Zen and aggro deck, but I, I don't really think this is meant for a draft. This no. seems more like a constructed card to me. Yeah, I like I like D for Gloaming Wisp. Mm-hmm. D sounds about right. Next, Hissing Spike Tail. Four yep. and a time for a four-two common Dino. It has Overwhelm, and whenever you play another Dino, you gain one life. Yep. So I think the most important part of this. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting tired. Um. I think the most important part of this is that it has four strength and it's a dinosaur. It also and has overwhelm. It also has overwhelm, but I think the but four strength four and it's better. a dinosaur is important because it helps uh, accelerate all these bond bond units. Yeah. Um, I, I like his spike tail. I don't like it a whole ton, but I do think that it is, um, if you're looking for common dinos, you could do worse. Definitely. Yeah. Um, four, two, four, four is an okay type line, uh, stat line. It's nothing exciting because it trades with most two drops, but, you know, it's okay. Probably just a C. C sounds about right. I could see I could see it going up or down, depending on how good the dino deck ends up. Okay. Next, Insistent Automaton. It's another Sentinel. 
at Uncommon, four and a time for a four five. For, so before we talk about the text box, how happy are you with a four power four five? Very. Four power four five is really good. Okay. Summon, put one of your other units into your hand. Okay, so there's two thi- there's two cases for this card. The first case is you don't have anything else on the board and you play this on turn four and suddenly your board is stable. Right? The second case is you have like the, and these are cases that make this card good, right? The second case is you have a bunch of units that care about entering the battlefield in some way. So summon units essentially. Or or some of the allies like draw a card or whatever. Right, exactly. Um then this also gets better there uh because you get that bonus multiple times. In fact, ha- hang on, I have a question. So with the sentinel ally, right? Does mm-hmm. it get that bonus permanently or just Yes. Or oh, wow. are you talking about the um, the fire one? I'm just the saying Raider? in general yeah, the Raider, ally that, effects. Yeah, ally if it's persistent it would be permanent. Like for Temple nice. Raider it would it's permanent. Nice. But so, like for first gun rioters that would have been that was that would not be permanent because it makes a weapon. Right. So then that's actually pretty sick with this because you play this, you bounce the thing that already got the sentinel bonus from it entering and then mm-hmm. you play that the next turn and now it's gigantic. Yeah. So, you know, there are you can do shenanigans with this card essentially. Yes. Um, there are definitely going to be cases where this is awkward, where you lose tempo because you're playing it. But I think that its stats are powerful enough that it's fine. I mean, also, like, if you're in a time deck and you have, like, Amber Acolyte, and it's like, you play yeah. Amber Acolyte, get a get a thing, then you, you know, play your assistant on top of time, pick up your Amber Acolyte, mm-hmm. then you're already getting some value exactly. there. And yep. I think that that's very, very, very good. Exactly. Yep, yep. I think that this is probably still in the c range unless you think that i think this is this is a reward for being in time this is one of the better uncommons i think okay so you would put this closer to b i think it's a straight b i'm very excited about playing this when i get the chance i'm on board i like b as well yep next intriguing ancient four uh eight power one time influence for a four five with bond and it has entomb and when it dies you play three one one explorers so four five for eight with bond. Uh-huh. So again, we're probably playing this on turn somewhere f- around turn four or turn five. Four or five, yeah. Yeah. So turn four or five for a four five that makes three threes when it dies, or one ones when it dies is fine. And it makes three one ones, which can be relevant for various reasons. Mm-hmm. So I think it's probably just is it? Just, it's probably just a C. I I think it's a little better than that. I think it's a C plus or a D, B minus. Um, this okay. is a reward for playing the Sentinel stack. Um, and four five is hard to attack through. Like if you have a couple four fives, very little gets through that. Okay. <coughs> and, and, and you're ranking this lower than insistent automaton because of the fact that you have to have, because of bond, because it costs eight otherwise. Um, yes, because you have to have a sentinel on board or on the battlefield for it to do anything. Okay. Because so you're not paying eight for this. Okay. Um, and I, I like the bounce. I think that the bounce on, uh, what was the last one? Insistent Automaton. Insist- I yeah. think that bounce effect is a net positive. Okay. I could be wrong about that. It might end up being that it's just too much tempo to lose, but I think that you're going to want to be bouncing things with all these summon effects. Okay. Next. Last Light Infusion. Three yeah. time for a common spell. Now As this nightfall, nightfall I can get behind. Give two of your units plus one, plus one. Yeah. I'm okay. And that's with not this. temporary. That's permanent. no. This is permanent. So I, I'm I'm okay with this. I think it compares about the same to something like unlock potential. Okay. It's probably very slightly worse than unlock potential. And unlock potential was playable. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Eh, maybe it's just not as good as I was thinking. I mean, again, if you care about nightfall, then there you go. You yeah. did it. And then you can make two of your units slightly bigger, which can change things. Because if you have a three two that can't attack, maybe your four three can. Right. Um, it it is also very good with evasive units, which are harder to come by in time uh-huh. um, outside of overwhelm units. But you know, you put you know two plus one plus ones on a flyer and an overwhelm creature, you're probably doing it. Yeah, I think that this is just playable i don't think, I think it's, it's a c minus or c i think c minus or d plus sounds about right because unlock potential just never was as good as you'd think yeah, yeah it was always like can i get one more unit nope well okay then this this card is not as good as i thought it was right right 
So having said that, uh, yeah, I think this is probably a C minus. You okay. can play it if you care about Nightfall. It goes up a bit, but if you don't, then don't play this. Probably. Uh, next, Lost in the Mist. What does the uh, what happens when we get lost in the mist? Uh, we get sad because we're playing a bad card. Um, so it's a <laughs> it's four power for a spell uh, that puts an enemy unit into the enemy player's hand and increases its cost by two. It's also common and one it's time common influence. And only one time influence, yeah. Mm-hmm. So teleport was fine. Yes. It wasn't exciting. I actually like teleport a lot. Okay. But I always found it to be like fine to underwhelming with a, with a few chances where it was like, ha, blew you out. Right. But Lost in the Mist, not being fast, loses a yeah, lot. It does. Like this is sort of like I don't know. So ask yourself how often you cast teleport during your main phase not often and it's not very often and then ask yourself okay how often was what i was teleporting big enough that they didn't have two to recast it and the answer is a significant amount of the time but Mm -hmm. i think that this is mostly just a tempo play for aggressive decks there's probably a deck out there that wants this but like a low to the ground like Praxis, Praxis or... deck maybe, but even Praxis doesn't really care about spells. It wants relics. Yeah. Um. So maybe there's like some sort of Elysian deck. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think this really has a home. Is the problem? No. Yeah. It's probably D. Yeah. D. D or D plus sounds fine. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I often teleported my own units, um, and this doesn't let me do that. Yes, that's true. Yep. Yep. Next. The Lucky Prospector, one time for a 1-1 one, one common explorer with endurance. Not happy about a 1-1 one, one endurance too much, mm-hmm. but it gets plus 2, plus 2 while you have a relic. Uh, that requires you to play like 5 or 6 relics for this to be good. Or at least, not even good, like for it to be playable. Because like have, if you're, are you gonna like for example, you can attack for three on turn on turn two if you go pro- Lucky Prospector into Cryptic Etchings. But then I have to play Cryptic Etchings. Which we already determined was not good. So yeah. Prospector, probably I'm only playing it if I need Explorers. Yeah. Like, this is definitely for the Praxis Explorer Relic Sentinel deck. I just think that that deck is doing too many different weird things. You yeah, three, I think it's, too... it's not. It's not just A plus B. It's A plus B plus C. Yeah. You need the explorers, the sentinels, and the relics. Mm-hmm. We're like, yeah. I think that the Lucky Prospector is just a D. Maybe even an F. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think there's a deck for it, so I don't want to go lower than a D. It's probably yeah. like a D plus or D. But yeah, you're better off if you're not drafting this until you get it super late and you're in sentinels. Then it'll be fine. So Yeah, fine.com. Find, uh, find. Next, we get Moondial. What does Moondial do? Moondial is three power, two time influence for a relic that su- it says summon in Nightfall. Um, and so basically, and then once per turn, you may pay five to draw a card. It's also an uncommon, which is relevant. Yeah, I'm not into this. Is pay five too much to draw a card? Yes, it is. Okay. Pay five means you're taking your entire turn to draw one extra card. Yeah. So you have to pay it, ten to get ahead with Moon Moondial. Yeah, I think this is just a little too much. Doesn't I get mean there. that effect once per turn or well not even once per turn on um the Huru uncommon one five flyer pay five draw a card. Yeah, I forget the that name card of was good because it was a one five flyer. That yeah, one five flyer could block everything. Yeah. Whereas this is just it just doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, compare this to Wisdom of the Elders. Oh, no comparison. And, and Wisdom of the Elders <laughs> is almost insane, like infinitely better than this. Yeah. So yeah, don't don't play Moondial. I mean, yeah. I guess there's the if you need relics thing, but these relics just seem unplayable. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next, Nocturnal Creeper, two time for a two one deadly Wisp at common, with summon Nightfall. Yep. Well, this is actually a card, I think. This is very good. Yeah. You know, two one can two power two ones. Yep. Two one They're can good. tangle. It's a good early, you know, early damage. Um summon nightfall's nice, especially if you're an aggressive deck. But this blocks you know, giant things late game as well. I like it. Yeah. This is uh, good. 
Probably just a C, C plus. Mm-hmm. All right. Moving on. We have the Panoptic Guardian. What does what does the Guardian do? It is six power for and two time influence for a two five with ambush and fate. You see the top card of each deck this turn. It is also a sentinel. Uh, and uncommon. Yeah, it's true. Um hmm. So I guess the, the the thing that matters here with fate, because some fate cards are shown to your opponent, like Nick Detraxian. Right. Most, several of them aren't. I'm right. assuming because like this is ambush, goal. this is one of those that is not revealed to your opponent. Probably, yes. I would assume so. And so I, how good is a six power to five ambush? Not very. I mean, it's fine, but... I mean, okay, so what, what does a 2-5 ambush eat, right? Like, it two eats a, a... Yeah, like, the best case scenario is it eats a 4-2. Which there, we have seen a few in fire. We've seen a couple of them, but 4-2s aren't probably not going to be attacking anyways because you probably have a 2-2 on the board. Or you would hope you have a 2-2 on the board. Right, theoretically. So every once in a while, this will get to eat something decent size, but most of the time, it's just eating a 2-drop, or it's combining to make a double block against something, which I guess is fine, but at that point, how relevant is a 2-5 body? Sometimes it's really relevant if your opponent has a horde of 3-3s three and 4-4s. Four yeah. But sometimes it's absolutely worthless because your opponent has flyers. And yeah, flyers are hard to do. Yeah. Hard to so deal I, with. I, I think that this card has a pretty high ceiling because sometimes you're going to get a really sick block in or you're going to get really good intel off the fate. I don't think that's going to happen very often, though. And I think that most of the time it's a flash 2-5 and you'll get a decent block off of it. But it won't blow you away. So this is probably like a C plus. Yeah, C plus sounds about right. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too aggressive of a player. But when I see a six drop, I really want to be attacking with that six drop. Um, it is very defensive, which yes, is this is a really credit. defensive unit. Yeah. But if and if you care about being defensive, then it goes up. Mm -hmm. Next, premonition wisp. Three time for a 2-2 two, two Wisp at Uncommon. We have a lot of Wisps for not caring about Wisps. Um, it has an ultimate. Whenever you gain life, you play a 4-4 four, four Restless Radiant. Wow. This... That's that's actually... Oh, it's an ultimate. Yeah, it's I was an ultimate. Say, it's oh, not geez. whatever. <laughs> no, uh, like, it's not, a, it's not suddenly a better Blood Call Invoker. Yeah. Um, no, this card's medium to bad, uh, I think. Yeah, it's a build around. Like... Yeah. If you have a few lifesteal cards in your deck, like if you're in Xenon and you've got some, I don't know, some whatever life gain cards there are out there, lifesteal cards there are. There like are. Um, Restless Radiant, the yeah, three, three, sure, three sure. That, with re lifesteal Reckless. Or Xenon Destroyer or whatever. Yeah. Like if you have some ways to gain life, this card is actually great. Um, yeah. Three power for six power and toughness is way undercosted, right? Yeah, but I guess the, the, then the question is, you know, how often are you going to gain life? Which probably puts us. Eh, I mean, the, since you mentioned it, probably build around B makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah. Like this is really sick if you just have like six or seven ways to gain life in your deck. And the other cute thing is if you can uh, gain life as a fast spell, this can be a surprise four four blocker sometimes. It can be. That doesn't happen very often, but there are some effects that do that. Yeah. Um, also, oh yeah, there's the uncommon three, one lifesteal trick that I really like. Yes. I like that card too. The shadow, but yes. So I think there's probably enough ways to gain life incidentally that this is worth playing. And I would actually take it fairly highly. Okay. Because this is the type of, so remember like games, games are one when you can create asymmetry when you're getting cards over your opponent or you're able to play your cards faster than your opponent or your threats are just better than your opponent and this is a card that does that um getting an extra 4-4 earlier in the game can be a really big difference so yeah i think i still stick with build around b yeah that's fine yeah sand Next. binder sentinel Ooh. five power two time for a Four six already. I'm okay with that. It's a sentinel, which right. is also relevant. Right. It is a sentinel, and then it says summon. Play a sandbind on an enemy unit with flying. What is sandbind? It is a curse. 
um, that stop that makes it so that a unit can't fly. Oh, okay. So like an it's individual. A, it's a one-off sandstorm type. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Neat. Uh, yeah, this card's good. I mean, like you said, four, five five power for a four six is already kind of like on par. Yep. Um, and the fact that you get to ground a flyer, which time has has trouble with, mm-hmm. that's super powerful. Yep. I, I think like. that this is probably a B. You you want it if you're time. Yep. And you're gonna you're gonna ground some big dorky flyer. Yep. This is good. I like it. And it also attacks and blocks very well. Yes. All true things. Next. All right. Ooh, this is one of the rewards for being in Sentinels because there's nine power, two time for a seven eight overwhelm bond sentinel, scourstone sentinel. At common. At common. Uh, so we had the five three charge in fire for six, mm-hmm. and now we have an overwhelm bond sentinel at nine in time. Right. Again, I guess how quickly can we put this? How can we get this down? Can we get this uh, down? We can by... get this turn five. Maybe. Yeah, we can get it on turn five. I think turn six is easier with Sentinels, though. Yes. Like, but Age I, of Sentinels is a, is a common right. as well, and it's three and it's a three five, so you, you can get this down on six. Yeah. Six is probably the most likely with this one. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really care if I'm playing this on turn six or turn nine. This is a card that wins games. Yeah, seven eights. Um, it's, it's got keyword big. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Keyword, the keyword. big. Yes. Um, what what what's the what's the uh, uh, what's the saying? Qua, uh, qual, uh, quantity is a quality all of its own. Yes. I forget who said that. If it was uh, Churchill. That sounds or, like uh, it was a World War Two quote of some sort. I think. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So <laughs> this is gigantic, and your opponent's going to say, "Oh, I guess I can't win anymore." Like I have several times. Um. Because yeah, it's also, it has overwhelm too, which is like, yeah. why does it need overwhelm? It doesn't, but it has it. Yeah. There you go. So, I mean, again, you're unhappy to play it at nine, but mm-hmm. if you need to play it at nine, you're going to play it at nine. Yep. There's no, like, you have to bond this to do something cool, so. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yep. All right, next, Seasoned Spelunker. Ooh, three at a time for a 3-3 three, three Uncommon Explorer. He gets plus one, plus one while you have a relic, and you can pay five to play a Power Stone, which gives you plus one maximum power. Yeah, this guy's good. Three mana, three power, three three, solid on its own. It's an explorer for the cards that care about explorers, and then occasionally you just get it's. It can be a four four, and you can get some like minor value by making a power stone. Yep. I think the power stone is more relevant because it's a relic as opposed to getting the extra power. Yes. Because Agreed. going from five to six or potentially to seven is not as relevant, I think. Yeah. As playing it in constructed, where you're able to play it on turn two and then play your fours on turn three. Yeah, I agree. This card's good. Yeah. Um, uh, B. B seems B, B or B minus seems about right. Yeah, it's strong. It's not blow me away strong, but it's good enough that I'm taking it early. Yeah. Ooh, here um, we go. Yeah. Oh, no, I I jumped a card. I was like, Serene oh no, we're on the excavator. One. Ooh. Three and uh, three and a time for a one two flying explorer mystic with sentinel ally plus one plus one. So I imagine that you're getting that uh, that Sentinel ally on turn four and attacking as a two three. I'm not excited about that though. Right? No, like, I'm not. I think I like it better with like insistent automaton. So like, okay, mm, you play Serene Excavator on turn three. You attack with it for one. Then you play the assistant. No, automaton, yeah, sure. You can bounce. Yeah, that's true. Making it a two three, picking it up, then replaying it, making it a three four. But that's two cards making this mediocre card. A good yeah, card. this seems like a lot of work to get an average flyer. Yeah, um, which it's probably D plus because it is an explorer. Yeah, C minus or D plus sounds right. Like if you have enough explore, if you have enough sentinels, this card's solid. Like a two three flyer is undercosted, but the problem is I think that too much of the time you end up with a one two flyer for three, and that's just not good enough. No, and it's not even like in fire or time or not fi- or fire or primal where you have spark shenanigans that you can pull. Yeah, like. I will say that it's, I've I've played against this card like three or four times now. I've never felt threatened. Yeah. So one power flyers can be dealt with. Yeah. But even two power flyers aren't that bad. No. 
Um, Next. Talir's intervention. intervention. So this one is a fast spell. All the, all the interventions are uncommon. It's one at a time. You gain three life. Or put one of your explorers or sentinels into your hand. Or silence an attacking enemy unit. Mm-hmm. So the first mode might as well not exist, I'm imagining. Generally, yeah, I would agree. Like it it can it'll come up like ten percent of the time, I think. Maybe five percent of the time, yeah. Yeah. I guess the mode that's gonna be used the most often is gonna be silence the attacking the attacking enemy unit, but that doesn't yes. kill it. I like that mode a lot, though. I do, too. I think it's a very, very good mode. And then I think the mode that'll happen second most is picking up an Explorer or a Sentinel. It's another way to, like, for example, buy back a Serene Excavator. Mm-hmm. But I think that Talir's Intervention, it has more value in ranked than it does in limited, in my opinion. Agreed. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Sometimes you'll be able to blank your opponent's removal spells by bouncing something. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the the kind of the best use case. Yeah, yeah. Even even though silencing the attacking enemy unit is going to what's be what's happening the most, mm-hmm. where it's like you know opponent attacks with their quick draw unit, you block, and then then they go intervention. Yep. And then they're sad. Exactly. But probably just a C plus. I think a C, but yeah, maybe C plus. I, I guess I, I, the I like it at B if you have enough explorers and sentinels that have like good enter the battlefield effects. They can okay. have good summit effects. I can get behind that, so we can say C plus. But yeah, cool. All right, Next. time worn sentinel six power and a time for a three six endurance, which has explorer ally draw a card. So this one has a real payoff for the other, for explorers. Yes. I like drawing cards. So the explorer ally is great. Endurance three, six is surprisingly good. Yep. Uh, It attacks through most things and it threatens some really devastating pumps as well. So if you have pump effects, like if you're in Combray and you've got like plus four, plus fours on this thing, oh geez. um, Yeah. Your opponent's going to have trouble. So I like time worn sentinel. Oh yeah, um, I, think I think it's, it's probably yeah. C plus. C plus, maybe B minus. I might be a little yeah. high on it, but I've been beat by this card, so and I haven't been it, beat very much yet. So <laughs> it does draw a card, which yeah. we mentioned is relevant. Mm-hmm. So card's good. Good. Trail maker. Oh man, I'm not sure what to make of this card. I this think this card's it's so good. Like how? Okay, <clears throat> two time for an explorer. It's a two one. Uh, you get plus one maximum power, and yep. you summon. Gain an influence of your choice. Yep. So it fixes your influence, so it's effectively a stranger. Fact, sure. Arguably better than a stranger, assuming you're in time. Right. Right. Um, plus one maximum power is I think I think people in Eternal underrate that ability in general. Because sure. people saw how bad Initiate of the Sands was. Yeah, but that was a one one power one one. Right. This actually can trade off as well. So if you need it to trade, you can trade it. And if you don't need it to trade, then, you know, it can ramp you into four drops on turn three or five yeah. drops on turn four. And that that's a significant advantage. Um, or your opponent's using a removal spell on it, which is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can get behind that. I, I like this guy. Now, the problem is, what if your opponent plays Amethyst Acolyte or, you know, like yeah. random pingers? And, yeah, that's annoying. But I think that the the combination of fixing and ramp is well worth it. Okay, I can, I can I can get behind that. I kind of I think I undervalued it valued it initially, but since you put it that way, I think that that scans. Yeah. So Card's where good. do you put it? Probably uh, C. C plus? I think it's a C plus to B minus. Okay. Because I I see this as kind of similar to that green guy that uh, when it dies draws a justice sigil. Sure. Okay. But I think this is better. All right, that's understandable. Um, I, I can get, I can get behind C plus. All right. Uh, that goes for time. That's it for time, yeah. Man, speaking of the time, I am tired. Jeez. I didn't get enough sleep last night, so I'm like... Oh, I'm... Fried. I, I got up at uh, 5 this morning, so... Wow, that's worse than me. I got up at 8, and I thought I was getting up early. Okay. <laughs> Let's move <laughs> on to what we want out of everything. Sweet, sweet justice. Yeah. Um. So, the first card on our list is Copper Hall Marshal. So yep. three and a justice for a 3-3 three, three common gunslinger minotaur. 
Minotaur relevant unit type for ranked, not so much for limited. Yeah, uh, there's a couple from set two, but nah, not not yeah. really. And has ultimate. When you play a weapon on Copper Hall Marshal, stun an enemy unit. Yep. That seems very good. It, it it's solid. I mean, Three power three three is already kind of like you know fine. You're unexcited, but you're happy. Yeah. You're, you're not gonna complain about it. Yep. The upside of suddenly blanking an enemy unit for multiple turns seems like the real game. Hmm. I I think it's honestly I, I I think that the most important part is it's just like a three three. <laughs> yeah, I mean obviously it's it's part of the Rakano curve basically. Like yeah, Rakano is where you, one of the places you want to be for gunslingers. And uh, this is a nice gunslinger that attacks well and blocks well. And yeah, if you have the weapon, it's great. But I think that most of the time, this just ends up being a 3-3 that helps bond your other gunslingers. So C? I think C to C+, plus, yeah. This seems yeah. better than most threes. Right. So and here's common. the card that you mentioned. Yep. Copper Hall Porter. Two yep. Justice, two one. Minotaur Common. In Tomb, draw a Justice Sigil mm -hmm. from your deck. Yep. So this is card advantage if it trades. Um, really annoying for aggressive decks to deal with because then you're giving... Like, if you have to attack through this, you're giving them value, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, like, overall, good card. I think that most Justice decks want two or three of these. Yeah. So I mean, it's probably a C plus to B minus. Yeah. I probably think not C B plus. minus. I think C plus is right. Um, another thing to note about the Porter is a lot of the Entomb cards that you'll see, people will want to save their silence effects for. Yep. I don't see a universe where someone is like willingly silencing a Copper Hall Porter when they can silence one of your other units. Yeah. So, it seems yep. pretty good to me. It's good. All right. Next, so Crack what? Shot Fugitive. Yeah, what is it? What does she want? She is a two power, one justice, two two gunslinger. Um, so, you know, passes the vanilla test, 2-2 two, two for 2. When Crackshot Fugitive attacks, she gets plus 1, plus 1 this turn for each of your units wielding a weapon. Combos with Caleb. <laughs> yes, everything combos with Caleb, didn't that's, you know? That's true. Um, um, uh, this is just a 2-2 two, two for 2. Just a 2-2 two for 2. Two, two for two. Gunslinger. fine. But, yeah, it's it's okay. I, I think I would give this, like, a C. Like, all the other 2-2s two with 2 with a minor upside. Yeah. I mean, how... How many? How big do you think that? What's the biggest you think she'll get? Four four, four four. Yeah, but she counts so, herself too. Yes, she does. Um, but I, I honestly think that the only thing she really matters for is she's a two two gunslinger for two. Like yes. that's enough. You should. She also two. is a reason to spread out your weapons instead of making one giant battle cruiser. Right, which is good practice, anyways. Yes, but yeah. Uh, also insane with emerald ring, but everything's insane. Oh, with emerald good ring. lord! Yeah, you're right. That is good with emerald <laughs> ring. All right, okay. next, Crown Watch Legionnaire. Uh, it is a three power, one justice, one three with lifesteal and endurance. And he's a soldier. And is a soldier. Good point. So I don't know if we've had a lifesteal endurance unit yet. I could be wrong. Mm. I, I mean, was, I've made, uh, I've Copper made Hall made Marshall something. one. It was a, was there, there was a, oh wait, no, that was four, four lifesteal Aegis, wasn't it? Which one? The there's a four. Uh, it was a Combray four power, uh, one justice one time four four at rare. It's like Copper Hall Marshal, maybe. Uh, there's the there's the one that's um, the four four Aegis Overwhelm. Yeah. Oh, did it not have life steal? No, I guess no. it didn't have either of those keywords. Oh, whatever. This is a good defensive body, though. It's well, I don't know about that. It's okay, right? I like, mean, it will. It, it holds weapons well. How many three drops it, does this block? Okay, that's fair. Like this doesn't block many three drops. It doesn't attack through basically any three drops. Uh, yeah, you're right. If you have weapons, this gets significantly better. Um, like this could become a beast if you suit it up. Yeah. Uh, but so does everything else, right? Like you don't need sure. life steal and endurance for something to be a good target to put weapons on. So uh, I think I, I do stand by that this is a, a defensive unit that if you're being if you're a slow justice deck that you're going to want. I don't I but, don't even say that you'd want this. I would rather have a three three than this. Sure. I want my blockers to be able to trade and this okay. doesn't 
All right, right. Like, so you're, like I had this at like C minus. Oh yeah, I I think C minus or D plus is about right. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought like, you. Were I, I, I wasn't like trying to talk this up to be like gotcha, you gotcha. know some some world killer. Yeah, yeah, it's not. But yeah, I mean, you talked me down from it, <laughs> but still. I mean, I wasn't going to say, like, suddenly say, it's a B. No. Yeah, but, like, like, cards like this, I think people take and they're like, oh, a three drop. But mm, is it? This isn't really a three drop. It's just bad. Um, okay. It's it's in between what I would expect out of a two and a three drop. How different is this from Copper Hall Herald, the two justice, one three endurance? Two justice, one three endurance. Uh, it mean... also, ha- okay, it all- that one also has an ultimate, which makes it into a three five. But... Right. And that card was bad. Okay. At least in my opinion, I did not like that card very much, and I didn't really feel threatened by it when my opponents played it either. Okay. So, you know, adding lifesteal doesn't add much unless you have a bunch of pumps and weapons. Like, th- this okay. is a weird card that gets better the less removal spells your deck has. True. Because if your deck doesn't have many removal spells, that means you're running a lot of relics, you're, run- you're running a lot of pump spells, you're running a lot of, you know, etc. And yeah, this card can shine in that kind of scenario, which is why I don't want to give this lower than like a C minus or a D plus, um, because there are decks for this, but I think those decks are generally fragile because suddenly you run into the guy that has a feeding time and, a, and, and you know, like other kill spells and you feel sad because you just suited up your guy and he, he got two for one. So yeah, sad um, day. Yep. All right. Uh, <laughs> curse of taxation for justice for a yeah. cursed relic at uncommon. The cursed player has minus one maximum power. I was wondering when Direwolf Digital, the publishers of uh, Eternal, were going to give uh, some way of interacting with the opponent's power. Yeah. And they did the right thing and made it unplayable. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't want this. You don't yeah. want this. This card is bad. Don't play it. You're spending a card to make it very slightly harder for your opponent to do things. And um, when this card is good, your opponent is power screwed, and they're already losing. Exactly. This is a it, win more card, and it doesn't even win more very well. No. So don't play. You're gonna it. draw that. You're gonna draw this in a top deck war and be like, oh. Yep. Don't Next, do it. <laughs> six power and a justice for a three three relic weapon named Emerald Spear. Yeah. And if you have a Valkyrie, you get to play a two two soldier because it has Valkyrie ally. So I think this compares interestingly to um, the the seven fire 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 uh, oh, five five relic weapon, that except one's for way the fact this. I agree it's way better than this one because this one requires that you have a, a Valkyrie to make the two two, and I don't want my six power relic weapons to just be three threes. It's not it's not even that really. It's that yeah it's yeah it's it's that it's not a it's not a five five. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not 5-5. Five, 3-3 five. Three, three three is kind if, of middling. If, yeah, if this was a 4-4 four, four relic weapon, I would actually be in. But it's yeah. a 3-3 three, three relic weapon, which just doesn't do as much as you'd want it to do. Uh, would you be happy if it was a 3-4 relic weapon? Mm, yes. Okay. Mithril Maze. So it's the, fourth, it's the fourth armor that matters. I think so, yeah. Because okay. you don't, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because with this... You rarely get to kill two things. With Mithril Maze, sometimes you get to kill two things. Okay. Um, like, honestly, I would be okay with either another point of strength or another point of defense. Okay. Like, either so, would be fine. But, like, C minus? C minus seems about right. Yeah, if you're desperate for removal and you have a lot of Valkyries, you can play this. Okay. But that's a pretty stringent set of requirements. Yeah. Ooh, Emerald Waystone. This one has you gain an armor when you have four Justice Influence. Don't draft it. Highly. Don't take it. Take it when it's like the eleventh or twelfth card in the pack. Yep. Sure, it helps you with like weapons, which does matter for justice. But even then, it's not. Don't. Just don't. Yep. Ooh. Kill <laughs> and entra- uh, sorry, three power and a justice for entrapment. It's a fast spell, and you get to kill an attacking enemy unit. Entrapment can't be played at night, which seems is- we- why-, why not. <laughs> isn't it easier I, to trap people at night I, I think the difference is that this is entrapment as opposed to trapment um i don't I, what is I, this like chris hansen why don't you take a seat over there like that kind of entrapment <laughs> like what i don't know i don't know <laughs> I don't um know, it is a common so you're, you're gonna see a lot of these both for and against you um yeah. killing attacking enemy unit for three is fine 
I think that's about the right cost that I would want for that. Yes. I, do, I mean, obviously we want it to be cheaper, but you know, I'm lightning strike that. can't kill everything. Right. Um, not being played at night is an interesting kind of drawback. Um, cause it, it is a drawback. Let's, let's yeah. not make any bones about it. I think it's fine though. Like I, at least in the few rounds that I've played, I guess how many games have I played at this point? I've probably played around 30 games in this format. Um, I, I don't think that play can't be played at night matters that much. Sometimes it's night and you randomly won't be able to play this, but I'd say that's like one in 10 turns. I, I agree with your sentiment. That's probably about 10% of limited games. Yeah. Um, however, you're going to have some turn where your opponent plays Rindra, the legendary four power five, five that has like overwhelming lifesteal at night and it's nighttime and you want an entrapment and you're just like, why? Yeah. But I think that, I think that those times are going to be few and far between on average that I think this is just a, like a B minus B agreed. All right. All right. Next frontier confessor, five power and a justice for a three, four gunslinger summon. You may silence another unit. Uh, the one thing I noted when I read this card the first time is that it is a three, four, not a two, four for ranked in chalice. Cause that would be oh. really annoying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but frontier confessor, I think is really good and limited. It is very good. I've already been impressed by it. I mean, three, four um, is good body yeah. gunslinger, relevant unit type silence is always welcome. Yep. It's similar to what was that? Oh, God, I can't remember the one four flyer that archive silence. curator. Thank you. It, this is about the same as archive curator. It's probably very slightly worse because archive curator could negate two flyers and this can only yes. do one, but it this also attacks better. So eh. it also blocks better by your estimation because it has three power true, but it doesn't block flyers. So it I think one of, one of the nice things about Archive Curator was it was a way for time to nuke flyers really effectively. Yeah. but I mean, yeah. I'd probably put this around C+. Plus. Yeah, C plus to very barely B-, minus maybe, but I think C plus is accurate. Yeah, I, I don't want five of these. Right. Like, I, two is my maximum. Yeah, and even then, I'm the like, right eh, I, really need to, I really need to pump the brakes on my five drops. Yep. Ground Crew. This one's cute. <laughs> you uh, played with it earlier. As I well. did. So it's four and a green for a two four tinker. Uh, and ground crew says you can pay one and exhaust ground crew to give one of your Valkyries plus three plus three this turn. It can't fly this turn. I think without that last line of text, that last oh. sentence, it would yeah. be a rare and it would be a ball. Yes. Though, even so, I think this is fine. I think it's good. Like, yeah, two like, two four is a better defensive body than a one three, as we've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and Valkyries tend to be pretty small and dorky, and making them yep. plus three plus three is it, you're basically finest houring. You get a finest hour on one of your Valkyries every turn, except it can't fly. Right, which means it probably ends up trading, but that can be okay depending on the situation. And a four mana two four isn't that bad it's a little undercosted but it's not so far undercosted that i'm like that i'm super disappointed yeah. so if you have five valkyries maybe then you can play ground crew and not feel too sad about it just for the potential utility also someone's going to ground crew in akaria and their opponent's going to be very unhappy <laughs> yeah all right so what c plus no i think it's a c but Mainly because there are a lot of better four drops you can play. Like this is playable, yeah. but I'm talking it up from a D, not, <laughs> not, 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 not from a C. Not to like... be, not to a B. Yeah. Right, right. Because like a two four for four mana or for four power with no relevant creature line would be a D. Yeah. Maybe a D plus. Okay. Um, and so the the ability could bring it up in some decks, but I'm not picking this highly. I'm taking right. a three power three three over this. All right. Next, humble instructor, one oh. time or one justice. I've passed this so many times. <laughs> yeah, it's an uncommon unseen, which is another tribe, which is the first unseen we've seen, which is unsurprising because they're unseen. Uh, you can pay to yes. an exhaust humble instructor <laughs> to give one of your units with two or more battle skills plus one plus one. Mm -hmm. So this is the first card that we've seen that signals to the Huru draft theme of having two or more battle skills. Yep. And I'm off it. 
Yeah. I'm I, just off it. I, well, I haven't tried it yet, but, um, this, it, I don't know. It seems I, like so many hoops that you have to jump through. Yes. You have to have a unit. You have to have drawn one of your units as two or more battle skills. You have to be able to pay the extra mana to exhaust humble instructor to get a small bonus. Um, yeah, this this card doesn't do enough, I don't think. I think it's a D. I think close, this is close to F. I think this is a D or D minus, yes. Because it it's, is an unseen and unseen is a is a tribe that people care about is that you can care about. So maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't think the unseen matters very much. Fair. Not in uh, justice. Unless space. you have certain rares. Like there's a few rares that care, but Okay. Next. Um Ironclad Oath. Ooh, I love this one. So four power and a justice for a fast spell. You can give one of your units plus four plus four this turn. You gain one uh, armor for each of your Valkyrie. So I think that the Valkyrie text is trinket text. Yes, it doesn't really matter. The important it, thing of this is plus four plus four for four. And we, we already saw that we had hoof slash in fire, mm -hmm. which was, you know, three and a fire plus four plus two. Yes. And here we have four and a justice plus four plus four. Yeah. Uh, I, I the immediate comparison is going to be to Finest Hour, and obviously you would prefer Finest Hour to Ironclad Oath because it's cheaper. I think a better comparison is Victor's Cry. Okay, Victor's Cry. This now, is fair. <laughs> close to Victor's Cry because Victor's Cry requires two justice, and this yeah. does not. Um, so you could play this in more decks. So in, in terms of pick order, I don't think this is as good as Victor's Cry, but it's mm, reasonably close. Um. It's yeah. probably like a C plus combat trick. I think so too, which makes it way above average for combat tricks. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I I picked Victor's Cry way too highly. I probably I like, did I like, too. <laughs> I like pack one, pick one, did multiple times. Oh yeah. Well, I don't think that's wrong. Victor's Cry was insane. Yeah. Um, and then plus five, plus five is huge, and the fact that it came back with revenge was also huge. Um, but you don't like most of the time it didn't even come back and you won the game. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, like most of the time the revenge was mostly just demoralizing your opponent and it didn't really actually matter whether it in revenge no. or not. Um, no. Ironclad Oath is most of what Victor's Cry did and yeah. at an easier way to, and you can cast it easier too. So okay. uh, I like it. I, I think okay. that it's probably C plus. All right. <laughs> Next Rampart Protector. Two justice for a 1-1 one, one uncommon soldier. When one of your Valkyrie dies, play a 2-2 two, two soldier. Ooh. So, yeah, I mean, two power 1-1, one, one, we're already unexcited. And then we have the hoop of when your Valkyries die, which they're going to die because they're, they're almost all flyers, and they're all going to get hit by removal spells. And then you make a 2-2? Two, two? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the pr the problem with this is, at the point in the game where you're going to be getting two twos, two twos don't matter very much anymore. Yeah, and they could serve to gum up the board a little bit, which is nice if you have other Valkyries. But I think you have to have like eight Valkyries for this to be worth it, and that's going to be pretty rare. I mean, the only Valkyrie that you can get that you are like trading up when you make the two two is Valkyrie Aspirant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But even um, then, well, that's like... I wouldn't think of it like that though. I mean, you have to think, you have to ask yourself. Um, is a pl taking my turn two off to play a one one that will draw that will draw and play a two two three or four turns down the line? Is that worth it? Yeah, and the answer is no. I don't think it is usually because now you haven't re like that one one isn't really very valuable. Like Rampire Protector just doesn't do much for you attacking or blocking. Yeah. Um, and the two twos once you get them, it's late in the game enough that they're not going to do a lot either. So I don't know. It's a it's like yeah. fodder. It, it's it's probably playable filler if you have a bunch of Valkyries, but I wouldn't go Unlike, out of your way yeah. for this. No. Next, reinvigorate. Two and a justice for an uncommon fast spell. Give one of your units, or ready one of your units, and give it endurance. It gets plus one, plus, plus one this turn for each of its battle skills. So I'm imagining that reinvigorate does not care about that last sentence. Uh, I disagree because it it gives it plus one plus one. For oh yeah, the that's endurance. right. That's right. It gives it plus one plus one off of endurance. Sure. I'm imagining that it only gets plus one plus one. I'm not imagining that you're suddenly getting there and make mm. making turning your 
you know, I don't know. How um, many battle skills does the average unit have? One? Uh, probably one. I mean, there's several that have two, especially now that Reckless is now a battle skill. Yeah. Um, which which is relevant for things like um, Destructive Radiant or Z- no, Xena Destroyer, which is a 3-3 three, three, um, yeah. three, three, uh, lifesteal Reckless. So now if you reinvigorate it, it's now a 6-6 six, six Endurance lifesteal Reckless. Yeah, for that turn. It doesn't give it for, permanently. Uh, oh, yeah, it's supposed to be this turn. Sure. It, this is a defensive spell. This is not a, like... Uh, it gets endurance for the rest of the game. Yeah. But it only gets a plus one, plus one temporarily. I think this is deceptively good. But, I mean, the it's way... Better, I, it's better than Humble Instructor. I'll give it that. Right. Like, uh, this reads to me very similar to... Oh man, there's there's been several effects like this in Magic before, like untap plus two plus two, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, active heroism. Active from, heroism, um, yeah. This reads kind of similar to that. Um, okay. I don't think is quite as good as that, but people are not going to expect this. Especially, especially at uncommon too. Right, it's uncommon. It's early in the format, especially. I don't think people are going to be playing around reinvigorate. Um. So, I don't know. I don't think this is a... This is not, I don't think, as good as... Uh, what was the last one we saw? Rollins, no, not Roland's Intervention. Re, uh, <laughs> Ironclad Oath. I think yeah. Ironclad Oath is better than this, but not by that much. This is probably like a C. Yeah, a C I, I like C. Speaking of Roland's Intervention... Oh, yeah. So next is that next? What does it do? <laughs> uh, Roland's Intervention, one and a green for a fast spell... Give an enemy unit minus three attack this turn, or give a unit or weapon in your hand plus one plus one, or give one of your Valkyrie Aegis. So you played against this on stream a few times. Yes, I've been blown out by this before. Yeah. The first mode is the one that matters. Yeah, I think the second mode in, is going to be the one that's cast this, or played the second most, and then the last mode I think is going to be the least played mode, but... Maybe, it yeah. is very relevant. You get mm-hmm. to getting to re giving to Aegis your one of your Valkyries in, in response to a removal spell is going to be big game. Yeah. But yeah, giving the enemy unit minus three is going to be the big, the big coup. Although to be fair, I didn't play detain, even though I probably should have. Right. Right. And detain was definitely like an underpowered card. Um, but this is a, like since this has other utility when detain is bad, which is some of the time, um this can you know still pick up the pace or pick up yeah. the slack i suppose so i don't know i don't i don't like this that much i think it's a c minus or a c but yeah i like playable. c minus yeah it's fine yeah and it by the way for those keeping score either we have seen a lot of c's in all these color in all these factions um and and we haven't seen many a's or b's and that's because most of them tend to be rares and legendaries and we'll get there later on yeah, well, so. we will. I think there's a card up here that I'm going to give a high grade that you will as well. But we're we're not quite there yet. Gotcha. Okay. Shielded short barrel. Uh, it's a weapon for in a green for a two one that gives Aegis. <clears throat> it's a common weapon for the weapon matters deck. Yes, that's true. And Aegis is uh, one of the keywords that is like both overrated and underrated. I think. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Depends on the context. Yeah, it depends on the context. Yeah, in, in, on sharp, weapons, I think it's really good. Yeah, I think short barrel is fine. I don't think it's like there's definitely weapons that are better than it, mm-hmm. but you can do a lot worse. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I, I think this is a C or C minus. Yeah, C. Playable. The, the, one of the things I've noticed is I've been finding a lot of four drops in this format. Yeah. Um. So this probably gets a bit of a strike because it's redundant a lot of the time. That's true. Ooh, here's a card that uh, I have actually won a game with. Uh, Showdown. Three justice for an uncommon fast spell. Give one of her units and vulnerable to damage this turn. If it's a gunslinger, it deals double damage this turn. So, how important is protecting one of your units? Uh... Say, in combat or from, from some sort of damage-based removal spell. Give your one of your units on vul- invulnerable to damage is usually an okay trick, at least in magic. Yeah. Uh, it's never like insane, but it's usually fine. Giving double damage in addition to that is pretty sick. 
So I dealt um, 18 to someone with this card. Oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> um, what was your 9-9 nine nine gunslinger? gunslinger? Uh, it was one of the sh- it was a shadow one with quick draw that when you attack, if it has a weapon, it gets plus two strength. Oh, nice. Yeah, I remember yeah. that one. Um, cool. We'll get to it later. Um, but uh, I do not actually think this card is that good. Sure, I killed an opponent with it, but just because you kill someone with a bad card does not make a bad card good. Yep, uh, that's true. I think I, this I actually, is a C-. I think it's better than that. Okay. I think it's a C-plus or a B-minus. Okay. Um, Ooh, B-minus. I, I didn't expect I didn't expect the B. To... This, this card wins games. Sure. Right? Like, invulnerable to damage means you either win a trade that you wouldn't have otherwise. Okay. Um, it means that you blank an opponent's removal spell a lot of the time, anything that deals damage, right? Mm-hmm. Um... It's not hard to be in a Rakano deck. Now, I'm not saying like you first pick this, right? No, no. I this is a gun. Like, like this is definitely a gunslinger tribal card. If you're not yeah. in the gunslinger deck, I don't think this is very good. But I think that gunslingers is probably the best tribal deck. So would you? I, I would be willing to say build around B. I can get behind that, but I, I think like if we're thinking about it in terms of a pick order, it's probably a C plus. Yeah. Or C. That that's that's fair. Yeah, it's definitely. I think that Showdown is comparable to Ironclad Oath. Okay, and it's that's cer- fair. It's certainly better than Reinvigorate. Yeah, on a Gunslinger, it's it'll probably be better than Ironclad Oath yeah. in certain situations. Most situations, okay. I think. All right, I could be Next. wrong. I tend to be a little high on this kind of effect, so um, yeah, I could be off on this one. We'll see. Okay. Next, signal flag. A, it's the thing we named the podcast for. Hey, we found it. <laughs> it's three in a justice for an uncommon relic weapon. It's a 1 4, and it has Valkyrie ally get Warcry. A. Because we, we named ourselves out of it, right? Okay, sure. Moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, um, for real though, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it either. It's a 1-4, which does mean it can attack multiple times, with which Warcry uh, could be relevant. Attack what? Um, <laughs> exactly. That's the that's the question. What are you attacking? Nothing. Um, <sighs> yeah, this card's not very good. It's not good. It's good if you want to get a lot of armor. But otherwise yeah, it's not. yeah, yeah, that's true. It is a pretty high amount of armor for three power, but there is a rare that cares about you losing armor to give it strength, and it starts uh, off as like an O three, so that okay. could be relevant. Yeah, I um, guess. But that that require that's a, qu- a conversation about the rare, not right? And then flag. why are we playing bad cards to make a good card better? Yeah, again, it doesn't yeah. make sense. D. Yeah, I think it's a D or D plus. Okay. Silverwing Rallier, nine yeah. justice, justice for a five four Valkyrie with flying and bond. Oh, thank God! Um, <laughs> if it didn't already have bond. Re- yeah, if it didn't have bond, unplayable. But five four flyer is a big game. It's yeah. a Valkyrie, which does matter. Um, your, your Valkyries don't tend to be very big, so you're probably playing this for five or six, probably. I'd say probably is, on average six. Yeah, which is probably fine. But it has Entomb play a 2-2 soldier. Yep. This is gas. Yeah. Uh, I'm evaluating this almost as if the Entomb didn't exist, which it does, which is a small benefit. But this feels like a B. You do I think need it's Valkyries. a B or B minus. Yeah, like, you do need Valkyries. But... Yes. Yeah, but I don't think it's that hard to find them. They've been in every set. Yeah. Um, so... Unlike some of the tribes just aren't very common in some of the sets. But yeah. This this card's good. I would evaluate this as a six power five four flying, and that is a good card. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Valkyries, Silverwing Smith, what does he do? Uh, he is three power two justice for a one four flyer, which says when you gain armor, gain an additional armor. I mean, I. For me, I'm evaluating this as a 1-4 flyer for 3, not yeah. without the armor text, which, again, which is fine. can happen. Yeah. It's fine. It's in Valkyries. Um, it's in Valkyries. It turns your Emerald Spear into a 3-4. Say what again? Remember the Emerald Spear, the 3-3 three, three Relic Weapon for 6, that with, uh, with a Valkyrie, you, um, oh, make, a, yeah. you make a 2-2. Two, two. True. It turns that into a 3-4. Yep. But then you're using two bad cards to make a good card. But anyways... <laughs> um, I think Silver Smith is fine. I think that gaining armor is not super relevant a lot of the way, a lot of time. But yeah, I, do I think don't think that, it matters very much. I think it's a one-four flyer 
it's going to be like an archive curator that didn't silence anything. So yeah. it's probably like a C plus. I think I, I'm closer to C. Um, I think it's an average three drop. Okay. But yeah, one four flyer is fine and Valkyries matter. So it's yeah. playable. Um, Next is yep. Soaring Guard, a More card Valkyries. that I accidentally uh, picked way too many of way too early. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a two and a Justice 1-2 flyer. It did? I thought it was much better than it was. Uh, oh. It's a Valkyrie at common. It has summoned gain two armor, and it's a flyer. Yep. Uh, I don't know why I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I thought this card was good, because it turns out it's, it's not. It's not. 1-2 flyers are almost never good. Yeah. They have to do something really exceptional to be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe if you're in a Valkyrie deck that has a lot of good weapons, you could use it, but I don't think you're going to. So, Nope. <laughs> pass it. Probably not. Moving on. Ooh, this card I think is I like pretty this okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so Spirit Blade Stalker. Yeah, what does he do? Spirit Blade Stalker is four power and a justice for a 2-4 unseen. Uh, with the ultimate of pay five to give one of your units plus one plus one and lifesteal. All right. Lifesteal is a mechanic, just like lifelink and magic, that is exists in this conundrum of it being both very, very good and very, very overrated. Mm-hmm. But being able to give one of your units plus one plus one and lifesteal is huge. Yeah. I think. Agreed. Like, even if it's just on itself to make it a 3-5 lifesteal, 3-5 lifesteal is hard to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you're usually using it on itself. Hopefully not. But, yeah, 3-5 lifesteal is pretty pretty solid. Um, definitely stabilizes most boards, or many boards. But hopefully you're using it on a flyer, and you're attacking for 3 lifesteal every turn. And yeah. that's that's really nice. Uh, this is also a card for the Huru to battle skills deck because you can uh, give yeah. whatever units with a battle skill life steal, but yep, we we've heard my thoughts on that deck. Yeah, I don't think that deck's very good, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Next, steady marshal one power and a justice for a one two gunslinger ally. Play a plus one plus one weapon on him or her. And he's a commoner. Sure. Uh, yeah, this card is good. I think. I mean, I guess if you can get the gunslinger part off, then you have you have a one power two three, which is yes. definitely good. Yep, one power two three with a weapon, yeah. which is better than if it didn't, I think. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I think that gunslingers are common enough that you're going to be able to turn this on most of the time. I fired off removal on turn one to kill this before. Ooh, yeah. aggressive. Yeah, but I think it was correct. So where do you where do you grade it? Um, I think it's a C or C plus because it's hard to find good one drops and this is a gunslinger. So maybe, maybe okay. C plus. Okay. But I like I, C. that might be a little high. Um, yeah, I just, uh, again, I tend to be a more aggressive player. So I like cards like this sometimes. Okay. Next, Next. we have tandem Watchwing three and a justice for a two, one flying Valkyrie, which isn't very good, but. It has Valkyrie ally plus one plus one, which is nice. Yeah, so I I do like Tandem Watchwing, assuming you have another Valkyrie in yes. play already. Because you or, want or this to be a 3-2. Yeah. yeah, or if you're going to play one the next turn, yeah. Yeah, um, like, yeah. We already mentioned 2-1 flyer for three. Yeah, but, you know, 3-2, yes. that's, that's big game. Yes, and um, what was I going to say? If you... Yeah, if you compare this to the time 1-2 flyer with the ally, this is way better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, more By proactive. Cool. Next, yeah. tower... Sh- oh, wait, did we grade that? We didn't grade it. We didn't I think it's it. C+. I think C+, is about right, too. It's good. Okay. Next, tower shield. Tower Six shield. Justice, yeah. A 1-3 weapon at uncommon. Summon, you gain armor equal to the wielder's health. So you're gaining at least 4 armor. Mm, I don't like it. It all depends on how much armor you like. It ma- it depends whether you have a relic weapon. It depends whether you care about gaining armor. It depends on whether adding plus one plus three to one of your units matters. Which all these things combine to a card that doesn't do as much as you want it to. It also costs six. Is the other yeah? Thing. That that's the problem. If like if, if costs, I'm if it yeah. costs four, like healer's cloak, then you know we're we're cooking. Yeah. If it costs four, I'd be in. Yeah, not at six. Yeah. D. Yep. 
Okay. Next, Next, Town Watchman. Six and a Justice for a 3-7 with Warcry. It is a soldier. So 3-7 Warcry is going to Warcry a lot. It's going to Warcry a lot of the time. Is it? When is it Warcrying? How well, late okay. in the game is it Warcrying? <laughs> that is would, the big thing, because Warcry is much, much better on cheaper units. Yeah, like, would you rather have this or a 1-3 with Warcry? I mean, I would rather have a two. Po- I would rather have a two power one three with Warcry. Yes, a hundred percent of the time. At a, at six power three seven, there are going to be times where it can't attack. It's also a good defensive body. Yes, it, it definitely it, is. A lot of its stats feel weird. I think it's still like a C because it costs six. I think it's a C minus or a D plus. Like, but yeah, it's. I I, I just feel like ga- cards like this don't really win games no and i want my six drops to win games i want my six drops to have more attack so i can pump them and actually get through cards like town watchman yeah um if i have a town watchman and i'm attacking into a cannon bearer i have to pump in order to get through it like i don't know yes i mean like i said it can it can war cry uh, pretty favorably a lot of the time into single combat at least but again, the question is, how much does that Warcry matter on turn seven? The right. answer is probably not a lot. Yep. All right. Next. Oh, by the way, uh, oh, no, we already graded that one. Valkyrie Arcanist. Five Justice Justice for a 3-3 three, three flying Valkyrie at common with Entomb. Create and draw a plus three, plus three gem blade. Yep. What? It, it's very much what it says on the card. Yes. It's very much all there. There's no quibbles about what it does. What's your grade? Uh, I love it. This is one yeah. of the best commons in the set. I agree. Because I'll, I would already play a 5 power 3-3 three, three flyer with no other text. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be that happy about it because it's, what, Huru Fletchling, and that card's, like, okay. Yeah. Um, The fact that it creates and draws a plus 3 plus 3 gem blade makes it on par or better than, uh, what was the, the Argent Port Valkyrie? Oh, set with revenge. Geez. Oh, Valkyrie Denouncer. Yeah, this is on par with Valkyrie Denouncer, and it might be better. Because you so, get that gem blade right away. Granted, you have to pay for it, but I, I like this. Who one. cares? <laughs> right. You're put you're you're making one of your other units plus three plus three, which exactly. could be another Valkyrie Arcanist, because right. these are common. You're gonna see a lot of them. Exactly. Well, yeah, I think that I think that Justice is overdrafted right now, but that's another story. Yeah. Um So what do you yeah. grade it? I think that this is a straight B or a B plus. This card's great. I I agree. I think it's a B plus. B plus, I think it's a tad high, but yeah, yeah, strong. Uh, I had I had a choice between it and uh, Frontier Confessor, and I think I picked the Confessor, and I was like hitting myself the entire time I did yeah, it. Yeah, that's wrong. This is yeah. better. But it's okay. Oh yeah. Um, We're learning. Val- yep, Valkyrie Bodyguard, four power for uh, and two justice for a three four flyer. Oh, I'm already in. Oh wait, hang on, it has downside. <laughs> yeah valkyrie it, bodyguard it can't attack, can't unless, attack you unless, unless you have armor Ew. it's also an uncommon boo makes you want to play those armor cards now huh huh does it <laughs> i mean okay. if it's just a three four flying blocker that's not the worst thing in the world it blocks a lot of flyers and it blocks a lot of ground creatures too if you just yeah. trade this off for another four drop that's fine the problem yeah. is this isn't super proactive unless you have armor. So it feels a little oddly win more, but also oddly defensive at the same time. You're either yeah. blocking with this or you're winning. Yeah. Which is kind of a real a weird place to be. Yeah. Um, it does. But like you play a relic weapon, you can suddenly attack with your Valkyrie Barty Guard. You play a card that gives you armor, you can suddenly attack with your Valkyrie Barty Guard. Yeah. You know, it is a it is a weird one. I think yeah. it's probably like on average, I think it's like a C plus. Yep. I I think I can get behind C or C plus or B minus. I'm not sure. It does but make like, cards like Ironclad Oath better. Oh yeah, because you play it on your say on your Valkyrie bodyguard, give yourself an armor, and you have a seven eight attacking. Yeah, it, that's pretty good. Yes, so All I right. can get behind Valkyrie bodyguard. It's probably it's a also, C plus. It's also a three power Valkyrie for your bond Valkyries. Also true. Yep, so and one that you don't mind exhausting. At worst, at worst it blocks. Yep. At, so. Yep, that's Next. fine. Valkyrie Cadet, three yes. and a justice for a one-one uncommon gunslinger Valkyrie. This is, I think, one of the few times we've had a uh, a unit with two of the very relevant unit types. 
both being a gunslinger yes. and a Valkyrie. And it has flying and double damage while wielding a weapon. Which is already game, because you already want to put your weapons on something that flies. Yeah. Or something with whatever. And then, like, let's say you put a Morningstar on this. You cur- you curve flying ca- Valkyrie Cadet into Morningstar. You suddenly have a 4-4 four, four flying overwhelm double damage. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. It is pretty good. Um, it's very much an A plus B kind of thing, though, and I'm always oh, worried yeah. about that. And for those that aren't familiar, what we mean by A plus B is when you need two things to make each card good, it's kind of a problem. Um, like a good example is the Xenon deck from the last set. Uh, yeah, with Life Force. With Life Force, where you had to have life gain cards and cards that rewarded gaining life. And the life gain cards weren't good on their own because life gain sucks if you're not doing anything with it. And the life force cards obviously sucked on their own because part of the, you know, the balancing for those cards is that, you know, you had to get the gain the life for them to be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is really similar. This card is unplayable if you don't have weapons. So how many weapons weapons are you? Right, right. How many weapons are you running? And if you are running a bunch of weapons, then this goes up and it synergizes with the Valkyrie weapons and the Gunslinger weapons. Yep. So, you know, there's like, I think that this is good, but it's definitely something you can't just shove in a random deck. You have to be very no. intentional about whether you're playing this or not. Um, and so don't it's be very fr- much build around. It is build around. And one thing that happens a lot is people are, when they draft this early, which I think is fine. You can draft a card like this early, like second pick, third pick or first pick or whatever. And, you know, you don't have to feel sad about it. But what happens a lot is people draft something like this and then they're like, oh, my God, I must draft every weapon I see and I must be in Gunslinger Valkyries. And then they try to force it when some other deck is the most open deck, like Dinosaurs or something, and their draft goes off the rails. And so, you know, just whenever you're drafting cards like this, don't be afraid to ditch it. It's a speculative pick. When you take a card like this, it may work. It may not. If it works, it's probably going to be one of the best cards in your deck. If not, you wasted a pick, but whatever. It happens. Which is why I think that this card is probably like somewhere in the range of D if you don't have any weapons. Yeah, but but, but, something like an A if you have weapons. Mm, maybe it's it's ceiling yeah. and floor are massive right right the, yes the delta of it's how high, bad it yeah. can be to how good it can be yes i would agree with i agree with that general statement i think that a might be a little high because even in even in a deck that has six weapons you might not draw them true uh um, i agree so you know like this card is good i think that if i'm thinking about where it goes in a pick order it should probably go in the first four or five picks um I don't think it should be first picked that often, but some packs are going to be weak, and it'll be the best card in the pack. Yeah, I, I think, think like it's C plus or B minus. I would settle like build around B. Yeah. Yeah. Last justice card is the wanted poster. One justice for a common curse. When the cursed unit dies, draw two cards. Yep. Good old reparations. Yeah, this one's kind of cute because you can put it on your own creature. You can't. Well, no, you can't put curses on your own units. What? You ha- you have to put them on your opponent's units. Oh, boo! Yeah, I know. It's much worse than that. Like, if if you could put it on your own stuff, it would be like very very good. But you can't. You have to put it on your opponent's yeah. stuff. It's yeah. They thought of that. Hmm. Well, that's not very good then. I mean, it's okay. It's like a D C minus. Yeah, like this is the s- weirdest, slowest draw two I've ever seen, but. There are things you could like, I don't know, this would be better from the sideboard because if I was playing against some sort of really aggressive red deck, I would play this because I just put it on a really cheap red creature and then block it. I did play this um, and I put it on uh, a deadly unit. Okay. And it basically stopped it from blocking yep. for a while because yep. why would why would they block with it? So Exactly. Well, but even then you're still trading two for two. No, I know. It's not good. I'm right, I'm not, right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was doing was like you know the greatest thing in the world. I still think that it's like somewhere in the C minus to like D range. But yeah, this card's bad. Don't play it. Unless you, well, there are a few cards that care about curses, which I may think make that it those are traps because yeah. I, <laughs> that's I, mean, okay, that's fair. I, I think that most of the cards that care about curses are bad unless you have curses, and most of the curses are really bad. Like, yeah, that's true. Almost all the curses are awful. Um, like some of the ones from past sets, like Permafrost, are really good, but that's pretty rare. Yeah, that's um, true. Like Permafrost like, is probably the best curse. Period. Yes. Well, I would agree. 
a discussion Zindel, for another day. Yeah, is, is Zindel's which is gift, better, I Zindel's suppose. gift or permafrost? In limited, it's easy to answer. It's permafrost. Yes. Yeah, but that's the discussion for another day. In constructed, I'd still say permafrost, but you know, <laughs> permafrost is All great. Right. So uh, that does it for justice. So, uh, Ian, if people wanted to find you and talk to you and chat with you and s- see you play Eternal, where can they do that? Twitch.tv slash Scalding Hot Soup is where you can find me. Also at YouTube and Twitter, but yeah. um, Twitch is the best place. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JYL129. Uh, I don't stream because my laptop is crap. Gotcha. It is very, very... It can barely handle a lot of things. All right, so. and I'm getting a work call, so I really got to go. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Right.